Okay. The Dolphins, of course, wait, we didn't mention earlier, ranked last in the NFL against the pass. That's directly related to injuries. Troy Vincent will be out again this week. Also, Gene Atkins of free safety will miss the game this week. But good news, Dwight Hollier, the starting middle linebacker, is in uniform. However, Brian Cox will get the start in the middle once again this week. That's the story from here at the Metrodome. Now let's go back to our Hollywood studios and James Brown. JB? Rashad. Four teams remain unbeaten in the NFL, and Dan Marino's Dolphins are one of them. Today, they're in the Metrodome to take on the Vikings. Warren Moon leads the Purple Gang, which exploded last week in Chicago. Today, he'll try to take advantage of the banged-up Miami defense. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Ahmad Rashad and Mike Ditka, who last week criticized Buddy Ryan's Arizona Cardinals as both unimaginative and vanilla on offense. He also added in order Miami is 3-0, and Minnesota is 2-1, and and for the latest, we go to Charlie Jones and Randy Cross. Gentlemen. Greg, as you know, defense wins championships, and Miami is very proud of the fact that they are number one against the rush in the National Football League. They bring it up often. All they want to talk about is the fact what a great start they're off yeah. against the run. But, you know, Warren Moon brought up pretty fast the fact that they're ranked 28th against the pass and he's going to throw the ball deep against these guys now he hasn't gone deep will he capitalize in this ball game i think he really will he's got two new starters in the defensive backfield and a rookie in the nickel now's the time to get the ball long all right now let's move over to the other side to the vikings i think they have the best tandem of defensive tackles in the national football league i think you're right charlie they're not the biggest guys about six one and a half about 270 pounds but what they're good at is what's good against dan marino quick pressure in the middle that pressure right up the middle and they're going to change their stunts so they can get a lot faster into Marino's face today. And it's a big play defense. It really is. Tony Dungy, their defensive coordinator, wants to make a big play. He's got some defensive backs like Dwayne, Dwayne Washington, their rookie, touchdown on interception last week. They read the quarterback well. They'll get a pick, at least two today. This will be a good one, Greg. All right, Charlie, Randy, thank you. Uh, Charlie and Randy talked about those defensive tackles of the Vikings. Clearly, the big mission for the offensive line of the Dolphins today is to keep them away from Dan Marino. There's no question about it. If the, if the Dolphins' defense line can handle those guys then they're gonna have a good day if they can't they're gonna have a hard day but let me show you what happens in there you see a double team on Randall here and then Thomas makes a spin move and gets out this is against the Bears last week but watch how many guys get to that quarterback and how quick yeah the double team on Randall is great but look at it one two three right on the quarterback right in his face now if this happens to Marino today He's going to have a hard time being effective against that football team. And those Vikings, as quick as they were on that grass last week, they'll be twice as quick on that AstroTurf up there in Minnesota. Okay, Mike, we know about Miami's high-powered offense. Ahmad has the other side of the story. Who sat in this chair with the hat on and picked the Vikings last week? <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb and guess you did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The Vikings scored just one offensive touchdown in the first two games, but last week Warren Moon and his teammates piled up nearly 500 yards and 42 points against the Bears. Meanwhile, Moon's old team, the Houston Oilers, are struggling without him and bickering about it. I spoke to Moon earlier this week. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones along with Randy Cross, and we have today strength going against strength it's really going to be fascinating we'll start with the offense of miami well dan marino's off to probably the best start he's had since he's been with the miami dolphins and he's got something going for him right now he's never really had that's a running game if dan marino's dream of getting back to the super bowl is to be realized he has got to have a thousand yard rusher now the defense of the minnesota vikings may be the best defense the entire defense in the national football league led by a tandem of tackles that are outstanding well, when you talk about john randall and you talk about henry thomas very quick very physical defensive tackles. Look for Miami to go at those smaller middle of the, of the Minnesota Vikings defense. And Warren Moon just becomes more and more comfortable with this offense of the Vikings every Sunday. Well, Warren Moon emphasizes he's got to have Terry Allen running the ball good because this is an intermediary kind of a passing game. They throw 10, 15 yards down the field. They got to run it. And Brian Cox is the linebacker playing out of position at middle linebacker. Look for this deep offensive line of the Vikings to make him feel like he's out of position. J.B. Brown, a lot of pressure on J.B. Brown today to make plays. He's the lone returning starter from last year. And you can feel the tension here in the Metrodome. The Vikings won the toss. They will be receiving. Kadri Ismael is the deep back. Scotty Graham and Terry Allen, the upbacks. Pete Stoyanovich will kick it away for the Miami Dolphins. 
And here is Kadri Ismail. Both these teams, Charlie, have had a real problem turning the ball over early, either on special teams or their first couple of possessions. And we are underway. It is high. It is short. It is taken at the 16 by Terry Allen. And he returns it near the 30-yard line. 14 yards on the return. And here is Wall Moon. He will lead the offense of the Minnesota Vikings. And there is an offensive line. Look at number 73, the rookie, Todd Stucey, the number one draft choice. They are very pleased. Warren Moon, of course, as I mentioned, every week getting more and more familiar well, we with talked his offense. Charlie, Terry Allen's got to run the ball. It's kind of funny seeing two tight ends with Warren Moon. Third down with Palmer and Ismail. It is speed for the Vikings. Vikings from their own 29-yard line, first down. Miami and Warren back to throw a little swing right side is to Terry Allen makes a nice inside out move he will go after the 35 yard line he's got six it will be second down and four and Daryl Malone that is a good sign for Miami as he makes the tackle here is the Miami front seven and again Brian Cox is inside his middle linebacker and Aubrey Beavers the rookie is outside in the secondary, look at that left cornerback, Daryl Malone, number 47. He is the fourth left cornerback in four ball games to start for Miami. Sean Hill then comes in when they go to the nickel. Second down and four. And Terry Allen is stuffed by Tim Bowen. Bowen's a rookie from Mississippi, the number one draft choice for the Dolphins. The Vikings think they have a real edge up front with their offensive line going against this number one ranked rush defense. But watch a, a whiff, a no hitter. Look at Bowens, the rookie. He just gets right through on the left side. And that's the one thing this running game can't afford for Minnesota. They, have, they do not have the talent that can avoid in the backfield with Terry Allen. He needs some room. It'll be third down and six. Craig Beasy checks into that defensive set for Miami. And Moon to throw. And Tim Bowens gets the first sack of the ball game. Tom Olivadotti, the Miami defensive coordinator, made the point we've got to get in Warren Moon's face. Warren Moon will put the ball where it doesn't belong if you can get pressure. And watch the pressure just come slowly. It's not a quick pressure. He looks and looks. Great coverage downfield by the defensive backs of the Dolphins. And Bowens more, more or less gets his coverage sack. So spot the ball back at the 22-yard line. So Mike Saxon is in to kick it away for the Vikings. O.J. McDuffie is the return man for Miami. As pressure gets it away. And he sails this one. Take it at the 24-yard line. Back to the 30. Little hot step. And then dropped at the 40-yard line. So Miami will have excellent field position. 53 yards on the punt. A 15-yard return. Charles Evans with the tackle. And Dan Marino will lead the offense for Miami. That offensive line, their job, protect Dan Marino. Backs and receivers. Marino has a cold. It's been bothering him for the last three or four days. And Terry Kirby knows his job is to set up for good third downs for Dan Marino running the ball. But Dan Marino is the best nickel quarterback there is in football right now. Brings in O.J. McDuffie in those situations. Miami starts at the 40-yard line. No score in the ballgame. Terry Kirby gets the call. And the defense is waiting for him, led by Vincey Glenn. Speaking of the defense for the Vikings, John Randall and Henry Thomas, number 93, 97. Those are the tackles and that secondary. They are going to be tested by Marino. They will, mainly because of their youth. With Dwayne Washington on one corner, and when they go to nickel, they bring in Malik Boyd at the other nickel back. Dan Marino's going to test them down the field with those wide receivers. Second down and 10. Little play action fake. Puck fake goes deep, has a man, and he just misses him, Keith Jackson. And it was Marino's fault. You could tell by his expression. You know, he had him, and he missed him. 
One thing I really love about Dan Marino is how demonstrative this guy is. He yells at his receivers. He apologized to his receivers. Good bite, good fake. He had him the whole way. A little big game jitters by Marino, I think. Just, just overthrew, a little too pumped up. But I tell you, what, I mentioned earlier, there is nobody in the league right now better than Dan Marino on third down. Third and ten from the shotgun. The man rush, step forward, fires, incomplete. Mike Williams, the intended receiver, and the rookie Dwayne Washington breaks it up. Well, Dwayne Washington has learned real fast here in Minnesota. If you want to fit in here, you take chances and you attack that ball when it gets in the air. Great job of closing on that pass. So it's going to be fourth down and ten. The Vikings, they were stuffed offensively, and the Dolphins, they were stuffed offensively. Jim Arnold will be kicking to David Palmer, the rookie from Alabama. And he gets a good one away. He's not been very effective. Get and is taken at the 10. To the 15 and then pulled down at the 16-yard line. So six yards on the return. Sean Hill with the tackle. No score. We'll be back in a moment. Oh, on the phone with the assistant coaches. Well, he's a quarterback right now that, that knows what he's facing in a defensive line that is after him. And Dungey showed early the defensive coordinator from Minnesota. He's not afraid to blitz Dan Marino twice in the first three plays. And he also will remember he missed a man that oh, he had open. He definitely. A little like enthusiasm, we said, Charlie. He's yeah. a little too excited. All right, the Vikings stand from their own 16-yard line. 12 minutes to go. First quarter, we have no score. Second offensive possession for Minnesota. And this time, He's to the 40, 45, 50. Finally caught from behind by Daryl Malone. 45 yards. Watch what Terry Allen does. He attacks in this way, and watch the blocking that goes on up front. Everyone's led the other way, and Terry Allen cuts back, and now it's just very poor tackling and defensive position by the Dolphins, and not bad for a guy coming back from two major knee surgeries. He can still scoot down the field. He just can't do much once he gets started. He scoots for the Vikings' longest run of the season at the Miami 39-yard line first down, and they go right back to it. And the pile just pushes forward to the 36. He's going to pick up three. It'll be second down and seven as Brian Cox makes the stop. You know, Terry Allen in this Miami offensive line has got to be looking at this uh, number one rated so far defense against the run, uh, the Miami Dolphins, sort of with a great anticipation. They knew it was a defense that's seen a lot of passing, and they have not seen a physical offensive line like these Vikings that's not down, that can just come off the ball and tee off on. Yesterday, though, he wanted to talk about Tyson, his dog. <laughs> football. Checking down seven. Moon to throw. Has a man open. Left back. Is complete down. He has the first down. He is out of bounds. For an update, let's go to New York. All right, Charlie, in Indianapolis, the Cleveland Browns are on the board in a big way. Vinny Testaverde to Eric Metcalf. 57 yards and a touchdown on the third play of the game. With the extra point, the Browns lead the Colts 7-0, but the Colts are threatening, Charlie. All right, thank you, Greg. Here we have no score, just over 10 and a half to go in the first. The big play, Terry Allen, as he rambled for 45 yards. A first down at the 26-yard line. And it is down to the right side. He's around the corner. As the blocking goes down the sideline and is out of bounds inside the 13-yard line. He'll pick up the first down. A gain of 14 on the play. That was just a case of Terry Allen seeing that he's pretty stuffed inside and bouncing it. And the best block he gets on this play is not so much from the rookie Andrew Andrews at uh, tight end at Jordan. Watch Carter cut right there. Great block by Chris Carter. Watch this right now. In the slot, number 80, Chris Carter down the field, gets the cut block right there. That's one thing they really emphasize here in Minnesota. Get into the defensive back's legs. Don't chicken fight up high. 
Robert Smith comes in for Allen. Allen already has rushed for 60 yards. Moon to throw. Over the middle. His complete five-yard line and down is Adrian Cooper. So a gain of seven on the play. It's going to be second down and three at the five. Well, Adrian Cooper is a tight end that comes into this game with a bit of an attitude. You know, he also is from Oklahoma, much like Keith Jackson is from Oklahoma, and he feels underappreciated. He sat behind Eric Green in Pittsburgh, really says, I didn't get my shot. Warren Moon would love to give this guy plenty of shots to use that physical nature and that size against the defensive backs of Miami. Second down and three at the five of Miami. Robert Smith is the remaining back. Carter goes across in motion, and a timing pattern misfires. Carter was looking. Oh, no, it was Jack Reed that he was looking for a flag. He didn't get it. Was there a pick? Well, he was he was working against J.B. Brown. J.B. Brown was completely blocking his path inside to the ball. I think they're going to get him for a pass interference here. You saw where that was a great timing throw by Warren Moon. Unfortunately, the timing was disrupted by the defensive back. Number 37 defense, penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. Now working from the five yard line, contact, contact, more contact. That's five yards down the field, but that's really inhibiting the receiver's progress to get inside. He's got the right to get down in there. So spot the ball just outside the two yard line. It's going to be first down and goal to go. Randall McDaniel is the lead blocker. He is the guard in goal line and short yardage. And now you see a kind of a hookup. And you have the feeling that that Carter and Singleton were looking for somebody to come break it up. Well, the best cure for a guard in the backfield, stuff the guys up front so he's got nowhere to run. That's exactly what the defense does. Not only Terry Allen, but Randall McDaniel just kind of plows into the back, and you can't give Randall McDaniel the room to get going. He absolutely splatters linebackers when he hits them when he's got that four or five yard run at him. It is the same offensive set. McDaniel, the lead back, Allen is the tailback. And he stumbled. And he's going to go down. He may pick up a half a yard. It's going to be third down and go like, oh, Jeff Cross was there to cover it. Dennis Green, the head coach of the Vikings. Well, both these offenses, Miami and Minnesota, have had a real problem their first cu couple of possessions. They've got down deep, and they've made mistakes. I think what Warren Moon has to do here, just go right into a throwing type thing. You're not going to sell much of a play action fake. Get the ball to Chris Carter. He's your money guy. Eighth play of the drive. Terry Allen, the remaining back. Watch Chris Carter in motion. A little fake job there. Working against Malone. He started coming one way, ran back the other way. And Malone just could not recover. Watch Carter. Pure speed. This is what Jerry Rice does at San Francisco. He just says, I'll go in motion, I'll run to that flag, and I can get there before your defensive back does. Nice throw by Warren Moon. Juan Ravage will have tipped the point after it is up, and it is done. And Minnesota moves on top by a score of seven to nothing. 84-yard drive, eight plays, cap with a touchdown pass to Chris Carter. The all-new 1995 Eclipse from Mitsubishi. The new thinking in automobiles. By Zima, a unique alcohol beverage. By MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. And by Burger King. Value every day, have it your way. Back to the Metrodome, 7.43 left to go in the first. Vikings up 7-0. O.J. McDuffie, Mike Williams are the deep back as Juan Reves kicks off. And it is taken by McDuffie to the 20. 
Peter 25 makes a cut, comes back inside, good return, out to about the 33-yard line. Also joining us on the telecast is John Dockery. Let's join him, Doc. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. You mentioned earlier about uh, Dan Marino and his cold. He's been sick for the last few days, and I talked to him before the game. I said, Dan, how you feeling? And he said, I feel a little sick, but I feel okay. But you could hear the congestion in his, in his, uh, in his voice and in his, in his head. So I think he was more concerned about the artificial turf. I saw him before the game checking the turf, checking his uh, Achilles tendon to see if it was all right. So we'll keep an eye on Marino. Back to you. Miami second possession. And they'll start from their own 33-yard line first down. And again, it's to the second back to Kobe. He has a couple of yards to the 35. It's going to be second down and eight. One thing, though, great athletes over the years, I found out, that when they have a bit of a cold or when they don't always feel that good, they can have an outstanding performance. Well, the last thing you want to do is watch Dan Marino when he's uh, not over the ball, over the center, and judge his physical ability by that. He limps off the field. He looks kind of slow. He looks like he's back. This guy is fired up and gets higher than almost any other quarterback. He controls his emotions, but he's a pumped-up quarterback. Back. Second and eight, he goes to split backs. And he's inside to Kirby, and he is stuffed, and there's a flag. Henry Thomas got it. Well, Henry Thomas lines up in that cock defensive tackle, and that's specifically to get penetration. You see how hard it is to stop. Holding number 65 offense. Penalties declined. Brings up third down. We talked about the defensive tackles. Watch 97 Thomas, how fast he gets off the ball. Bang. Dahlenbach, the center, has got absolutely no chance to get him and has to literally tackle him to try to keep him off of Kirby. And that hot tackle, therein lies the story that we will unfold for you today. It was discovered by mistake. But it's designed to force double teams, Charlie. Third down, 13. Reno from the shotgun, kind of stumbles out, throws, it is caught. The officials know one is going to rule no. The other one follows it. Incomplete, fourth down, 13. Ingram, the intended receiver, Roy Barker, was putting the pressure on Marino. It is three and out for Miami. Well, Tony Dungy, the defensive coordinator for the Vikings, said something made your eyes, eyebrows jump a little, Charlie. The other day he says, I want to make Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins throw. And one of the reasons he wants them to throw, Tony Dungy wants that defensive line to get after Marino. Good job of moving around by Marino, but the receivers have got to adjust back to the quarterback when Marino gets flushed. Fourth down. And here's the kick. Second time in the ball game. It's a terrible kick. Still bouncing. It's finally going to go out of bounds on the far side. 34 yards on the kick. Vikings have the ball and the lead 7 other. As Marino scrambled on that last play on third down, watch the ball go right through the arms and be trapped on the ground right there. Ingram has it. Looks it through, oh, into and through and onto the ground. <laughs> that was a tough call from the back, but a clear call from the front. Vikings lead 7-0. First down from the Minnesota 34-yard line. They show trips on the left side. Here's a screen, and he finally finds out. The screen's simply not there, and Warren Moon dumps it away. For an update now, let's go to New York and Gray. All right, Charlie, in Indianapolis again, Jim Harbaugh's 41-yard run set up this Marshall Falk touchdown. The Colts had just four rushing touchdowns all last year. They have five already this year. That was Falk's fourth. It's a 7-7 tie at Indy. Charlie and Randy. And Greg, and here's Minnesota 7, Miami nothing. The Vikings face a second and 10 at the 34-yard line. And you wait for that moment that Warren Moon is going to go deep against the secondary of the Dolphins. He said yesterday, this is an offense that you don't go deep that often, but you had the feeling that he really wanted to. He hands off to Terry Allen. Allen has to fight his way back to the line of 
scrimmage. That is his seventh carry, and he is still stuck at 60 yards rushing as Marco Cole makes the tackle. Remember what we said, Terry Allen is a momentum runner. He's got to get the momentum going before the speed gets going and he gets dangerous. You don't want Terry Allen, if you're the Vikings, stopping and going in the backfield. That means penetration, and that means lost yard. Now the remaining back. Third and ten, room to throw. Four man left. He comes to the second. He's got the mark it. They'll mark it at the 44 yard line. That should be enough for the first down. Just barely. Well, Kadri Ismail danced all over that marker. Outside receiver Ismail just pushes off and comes right back to the marker. Watch the feet. Very aware of where he is. What we have to look at at the end here is watch the way the feet come down right where that orange marker is. Good job. He's the speed, and he is that down-the-field danger, I think, Charlie, for Warren Moon. First down, 44-yard line. And here's Robert Smith. He's got a yard to the 45, and that is it. It'll be second down and nine. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that the Minnesota Vikings have to sort of kept pounding out. They, they try to screen, and they haven't really set up the fact that anybody's coming after him. One guy that's going to come after the running back every chance he gets, wherever they have Brian Cox playing, Brian Cox is going to come after that running back when he sees he has the ball. Second and nine. Fake to the reverse. Moon to throw. He goes downfield. The fleet flag is down. If it stands, it's a first down at the 42-yard line. Jake Reed pulls it in. That is his 16th reception on the year. Good for 13 yards again if it holds. It's a defensive call. They'll take the play. Holding. Number 91 defense, penalties decline, first down. Call on Jeff Cross. That is, I beg to differ. <laughs> Jeff Cross, not real excited about that, but what he got called for was calling on, uh, holding on Adrian Cooper, the tight end, who was trying to release down the field, and he had a little helmet, had a little jersey, had a little pad, had a little everything of Cooper trying to go away from him. First down, 42-yard line of Miami. Vikings leading 7-0, their second long drive of the game currently underway. Play action fake. He goes deep to the far side. First down. Jake Reed. J.B. Brown bumps him out of bounds. 17 yards on the play, and now Warren Moon is just picking that secondary apart. Well, he is, and he's got a receiver in Jake Reed that... You know, people forget this guy's actually bigger than Herman Moore. People talk about how big Herman Moore is from Detroit and what a physical receiver is. Dennis Green points out real fast, that is what Jake Reed needs. He needs to play with more of that physical attitude like Herman Moore. He needs to play like a big wide receiver. 6'3", 217 pounds, first down, 25-yard line. Seventh play of this drive. And Moon to throw. As pressure goes, it is incomplete. Just off of the fingertips of Adrian Cooper. And he was nailed by Aubrey Beavers. It'll be second down as we come back to the 25. Watch the very end. He's completely stretched out. And watch Michael Stewart right here come right through. Ooh. That, that, that can't feel good. And, you know, Cooper wants to think about the fact that he wants to be the big playmaker. He wants to be the man. A, a safety showing up in your stomach like that can take your taste for big plays out. As we look down from the top of the metrodome, it is second and ten. And the right guard got an early job. Bernard Dafty, he was in a hurry to get out, wasn't he? Hey, if you were 6'5", 331, you'd start a little early, too. <laughs> Prior to the snap, we got false start on number 75 offense. Five-yard penalty, 
Repeat second down. Well, yeah, that's all a gravity thing, Charlie, because once 331 pounds starts going over that right foot and he's pulling, there are no air brakes. That's right. The best bus and semi in the world don't have the air brakes to stop that stuff. You could say he caught a flyer. <laughs> You always like to see that about, out of your offensive line early, just that aggressive nature, the attack nature. And with the size of this offensive line, what really gets lost in this whole thing, they're big and they have a nasty attitude. They love the power. Second and 15. Moon to throw. Good protection. He goes back underneath the coverage to Amp Lee. Ryan Cox with the tackle. Amp Lee will be featured as the third down back in this offense of the Vikings today. They like him because of his quickness, and they like him on this artificial surface. They really do. Probably the biggest game Amp Lee's ever had as a professional was in this stadium on this field when he was with the San Francisco 49ers. They were missing Ricky Waters, and all Amp Lee did was com come into the game with basically no practice and not very much playing time and gained over 100 yards against Dennis Green. And Dennis Green remembered that when he became available. Third down and eight. Timing. Warren Moon is right on target. Jake Reed, 14 yards, first down. Cox with the tackle. Now here's an example of a big wide receiver playing like a big wide receiver because it takes a big man to stretch out your body and go after these balls when they get in here. This is danger territory. You know there's a safety. You know there's contact coming. He lays out and gets it. That, that shows me he's uh, getting some of that attitude Denny wants in him. Not only does he lay out and get it, he comes back and keeps his feet under him for extra yardage. Warren Moon, look at this. He has completed 9 of 11 for 86 yards and the touchdown. It's first down and goal to go. And back to the ground. A little sweep to the right. And coming back to Terry Allen into the end zone. Touchdown Vikings. They lead 13 others. was just a case there of Terry Allen would not be denied. He should have been down on about the two-yard line. Charlie and power on two operated knees and great attitude. Wide remains with the extra point attempt and it is right down the middle. Minnesota 14, Miami another. All coaches and great quarterbacks, they have best case scenario and worst case scenario. Best case for Dan Marino to run the ball and be ahead. Worst case scenario, you're down 14-0, and that line's... Terry Allen scoring from eight yards out. Vikings up 14 and nothing. Quad Reves kicking off. Mike Williams, O.J. McDuffie are the deep backs on the return. And just a low skimmer that's going to bounce along. And that is a mistake by Mike Williams. If he lets it go out of bounds, he would have had the ball at the 40-yard line. Instead, he is out the 15. Let's go back to the touchdown. Watch what happens here. What sets this up? The combination block between Chris Hinton and Jordan. Watch the lane. It's going to set up just outside that combination block. Cross gets hooked. Jordan does a great job. Miami doesn't tackle. You know, trouble rolls downhill, and when you're a defensive line coach, the head coach asks you, what's the deal? Why aren't you stopping them? You know what happens then? You find the defensive line responsible. And you ask them, what's the deal, guys? You can't get hooked. Miami's third possession. They're down two touchdowns. Their first two possessions, three and out. Hip, fumble, ball is loose. They're going to rule it incomplete. They're going to say that Mark Ingram did not have possession. Marino now is 0 for 4. And he's going to give Mark Ingram a little uh, comment, I think. Ingram was the one that had the low ball earlier. It's in, it's bobbled, it's out. Never had position. Let's watch it from the other angle. What you want to see is both hands on the ball, both feet on the ground. Nope. Seven plays for Miami. Minus three. That is the total offense for the Dolphins shotgun. And the handoff back underneath the key fire. He's going to pick up three. It'll be third down 
and seven. This is the position you don't want to be in the Metrodome, one of the loudest stadiums in the league, and the defensive line. You could bet you'll be able to see the saliva dripping out of these guys' mouths coming after Dan Marino. We talked about strength against strength. Miami's offense against the Vikings' defense. The Vikings much stronger now of the two in that matchup. You know, they're, they're all blood in the water with the Sharks. The Sharks are smelling the blood right now on both sides of the ball on their lines. Offensively for Minnesota, defensively for Minnesota. Four wide receivers, shotgun third and seven. He fires, flag is down, and is caught for the first down if it stands up. Keith Jackson pulls it in just across the 30-yard line. A gain of 13. And it will be a first down. First first down of the ball game for the Dolphins as they convert on third and seven. Here's the call. There is no flag on the play. Result of the play, completed pass, first down. Look at Joe Green uh, giving a little bit to, to Jeff Cross here. You know, when, when you line up there and they go outside, they don't hook you. And a veteran really, really has not much of a comeback, and that's the wrong guy to have a comeback to anyway. I played against, I played against this guy in 1977 on a Monday night game. I got a severe introduction to the Pittsburgh defense. Again, you see that cock in the defensive line of the Vikings. Here's the handoff to Terry Kirby, and he's going to pick up just a couple of yards, maybe three on the play. You saw Joe Green. Tell us the story of how that all came about. Well, Tony Dungy, who was also on that 1978 Steeler team with uh, Joe Green, says that you let Hocock defense, everybody claims credit for it. They say, well, I was the guy that did it. No, I was the guy that did it. Joe Green accidentally got into it. They stopped their offense so well in practice. They said, hey, why stop now? We'll save it for the playoffs. And it worked like a charm. And we'll be back in a moment. Second quarter, Vikings up 14 and other. Uh, Joe Green, one of the members of the 78 Steelers. Joe Green there, number 75, Tony Dungy. Defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings has carried a lot of those attack, attack, and when in doubt, attack philosophies of Bud Carson from those old Pittsburgh Steelers teams. Second down and seven, play action fake. Marino goes deep, has man coverage, and it's time. Going high and bringing it down is Irving Fryer. They will mark the ball dead at the 23-yard line. 43 yards in the flying reception by Irving Fryer, his 12th catch of the year. And, and what Dan Marino does, we talk about the attacking. He's got Dwayne Washington, the rookie, at the corner in man-to-man. -man. Fryer turns him around, but Washington never turns around for the ball, has no idea. What an athletic move by Irving Fryer over the top. Watch how he just leaps. Washington never has a chance, and that's just one of those things you make a highlight film for a rookie and say, here's one you don't want to repeat. 23-yard line of the Vikings, first down line. Reno pump fake, then he drills it, and he's dropped. That's Mark Ingram again. We talked about Marino being kind of a fiery quarterback. Have no doubt. Dan Marino will point that out. Did Keith Byers get a hand on it? He was the first receiver. It looked for a moment he might have just touched it as it went by. I couldn't tell. Quick pump fake. Didn't get what he was looking for. Went back inside. Right there, yeah. Oh, right through the hands yeah. of Byers. A double right drop. through the hands of Ingram. <laughs> Think there's a little heat on that ball? Reno, two of seven, second and ten. And Marino to throw. Fires into the corner, it is incomplete. Fryer trying to keep his feet in bounds and pull it in. Dwayne Washington had the coverage. It'll be third down and 10 back of the 23. But Dan Marino and Fryer have found something they like, and that's Dwayne Washington, number 20, out there. They're going to keep going after this kid until Dungy and the defense can adjust a little bit and make them go the other way. He's the rookie, the number one draft choice for the Vikings. He had that interception against the Bears, his first interception last Sunday, and he rambled 81 yards for the score. They are very high on this young man. So is Dan Marino right now. He's high on his list. <laughs> yes, he is. And he's looking right over there again. He makes no bones about it, and it is incomplete. Marino misses. Fire. Second time in the ballgame that Marino has been off target. And 
you're right. They're going after Washington. Well, yeah, I mean, they've got every right to. They've, they've got to make that test against a young guy like that. So it'll be fourth down and ten, and the kicking team comes in. That is a serious-looking quarterback. You look, saw that scowl on Joe Green's face. I mean, that's scary to an offensive lineman. That scowl on a quarterback's face is a scary sight to offensive receivers. John Randall was putting the pressure on. 41-yard field goal attempt by Stoyanovic. And he pulls it. It is no good from 41 yards away. He misses left. He hooks it. Score remains. Vikings 14, Miami nothing. One thing Dan Marino has to be emphasizing to his receivers there is, guys, you're pressing a little bit. And stay with us this afternoon for the second half of the doubleheader on NBC. Most of you to see that matchup in Los Angeles, it should be a good one. San Diego against the Raiders. Jeff Hostetler, he is back in San Diego undefeated. He's back and Wade Phillips and the Denver Broncos will attest to it. That game he had last week. You see the new rule. In fact, the Vikings take over the 31-yard line. That is the spot where the kick was missed from. And the pass goes outside to Jake Reed. And Reed's going to pick up about eight yards on the play. And Warren Moon just doing surgery on the defense of Miami. Well, Warren Moon right now, 10 of 12, and he's hit six different receivers so far. He's doing what this offense does best. It runs the ball, and when it runs the ball, it creates a lane, not only outside, but inside, between the linebackers and the defensive backs. Look for him now to test that lane inside over the middle. Checking down in two. And here is Terry Allen. And he's going to be short of the first down. Mark it to the 40. It'll be third down and one. That was just a nice job by the Miami def defensive line reacting and stuffing the, the run on that side. That sets up a good opportunity for Warren Moon to use an Adrian Cooper. Play action, shot to the tight end. Remember what Warren told us yesterday? He said, I'm learning. He came out of that run and shoot. I'm now learning situation football again. And it's kind of fun. For the first time. <laughs> yes. You know, in run and shoot, we just run what we do. We don't care what you do. So it's third down and one. It comes across in motion. And the Miami defense is there. They are going to stop Terry Allen. It'll be fourth down. And the kicking team will come out led by Mike Saxon. Tim Bowens makes the stop. And the thing to watch here, you know, you've got the big guy, McDaniel, again at fullback. Makes a little block there, but, you know, nothing really happens. He hits Singleton, but there's so much penetration, no one can go anywhere for the Vikings. Two strong plays against the run back-to-back -back by that number one rated rushing defense. And did you notice that Chuck Kleinbile at tackle, he's starting to cock just a bit to try and slide through, through the uh, gap that opens up. Here's O.J. McDuffie. He is the return man. And Saxon will kick it away. And we have whistles. Here's the call. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. So it's going to be fourth down and six. As they take the ball back to the 35-yard line. And he nails another one. McDuffie goes back takes it at the eight yard line. He over kicked the coverage after the 20, the 25, the 30. Runs into his own man and returns to the 34 yard line. 26 yards on the return of that 57 yard punt. Taylors. Buy Tostitos brand restaurant style tortilla chips. Buy Compact. Look for the new Presario computers for that small business you can call home. And by Head and Shoulders and Head and Shoulders 2 in 1 turns dandruff problems into great looking hair. Welcome back to the Metrodome where the Minnesota Vikings are having their way with the Miami Dolphins. 14 to nothing. Moon, Terry Allen and company moving the ball against the Dolphin defense which is crippled in the secondary. And one of the guys they really will need is Troy Vincent. I talked to him before the game. His knee is still sore but he's expected back next week. He tried it out and certainly the Dolphin corners need Vincent back. Charlie? 
All right, Doc, Miami comes out throwing. It is Marino going to Mark Ingram, and this time he hangs on to it. He's going to pick up about nine and a half yards. It'll be second down and short. Jack Del Rio immediately covers him for the Vikings. Here it is. Well, say what you want about the, the defense of Miami. Their best defense at this point is going to be Dan Marino and this offense staying on the field. He down for the, the Dolphins. First down. So far, pathetic. Really has been. That credit goes to the front four, front seven of Minnesota. Pathetic is an understatement. <laughs> Here's the handoff to Kirby. He cannot get around the corner. He's going to lose maybe a yard on the play. It'll be third down, about a yard and a half for the first down. Ed McDaniel, number 58, is an unusual player for the Minnesota Vikings. Coming from the top of the screen, I mean, I say unusual because of his size. Everyone else is about 215, 220 pounds. McDaniel is outside linebacker, 5'11", 230, who can scoop. Third down, yard and a half to go. Here's the first down, Kirby. And he is tripped up as he barely makes the first down. Lamar McGregs gets him. McGregs, by the way, the starting strong safety for Todd Scott. And Dan Marino just called the, the side of the line that he likes the most with, most with Richmond Webb and Keith Sims at a, at a bad time saying, we got to keep this, these defensive backs off the field the best way. Let's get some first downs and let's do it behind the guys who go to the Pro Bowl. Vikings up 14-0, second quarter, just under 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Play action, takes it, gets it, kicks it as he falls on it. Vikings bobbling the ball and he's still loose underneath the pile. Dog pile. And you may think it has stopped, the play that is, but underneath the pushing and shoving and the scratching and the grabbing is still going on. The heck with the play, I don't think the ball stopped. And doing a handstand is Keith Sims, who we believe is the Dolphin who has the football. Well, two highly unusual things happened on that play. One, Dan Marino mishandling a ball like that. And two, once the ball gets on the ground and is available to this Minnesota defense, they usually get a hold of this thing and do it. But, you know, here come a little fractured flickers here. I got, no, I don't. And watch for Jeff Dellenbach because he officially has the recovery at the 49-yard line. He was the one that burrowed from the top of that. Second and 12. Reno now has pressure. May have thrown an interception rather than throwing it away or taking the sack. tackler here for Minnesota has been a guy since he was brought here that has made big plays strong defender and what he gets here is a little help from the the newest law firm in town Harris and Harris here's Del Rio he has an eye right on Marino watch him concentrating and now see how big those eyes got when Marino put that ball <laughs> up in the air like, oh it's mine Vikings start at the 47 yard line and here's Terry on the right side one thing we haven't seen from Warren Moon in this offense so far is with the success so far of the running game and Terry Allen picking up considerable yardage early and now in that last play, a play action fake should get the inexperienced defensive back of the Miami Dolphins to bite on. Second and three, perfect field position for them. The perfect situation. Terry Allen, the remaining back. of Jake Reed. J.B. Brown picked him up. Had pretty good coverage on him. Very good cover. You know, when something like this happens, watch the, the hand fighting and the pushing going on. I, if they don't throw a flag on this, it's great coverage. If they throw a flag, you say, oh, he pushed a little bit, but 
He's right there. Hey, a little, uh, little couple of fingers in the bike. Cuspins didn't uh, hurt his concentration too bad. Vikings with a balanced attack. They have run 12 plays. They have thrown 14 passes. Third down three. 8.26 left to go, first down. Moon again with plenty of time. He completes the connection with Chris Carter, and it's a first down. And you have the feeling that Moon can pick up the first down almost any time that he wants to. Oh, exactly. We made the emphasis earlier about what a great third down passer Dan Marino was coming in here. All Warren Moon's done, and so oh, just get first downs every time he tries it. The ball just outside the Miami 40 yard line. It's starting to appear scary what this Minnesota offense could do when they actually get it all together. Warren says they haven't yet. Marco Coleman has the second sack of the ball game for the Dolphins. This is something quarterbacks see in their mind's eye as their worst possible scenario when you're unprotected. Todd Stusey gets thrown away by Marco Coleman. And Warren Moon has absolutely no idea. At least Stusey has the presence of mind and position to pick up that fumble once Coleman forces it. As you look at Coleman, now remember that Stusey, who he just cast aside, is 6'6", 304 pounds. Stusey, by the way, was one of the finest for the Vikings in their all-ugly contest. And he bought his way out of the championship. We'll tell you that story. And we'll have a timeout. So we'll step aside. The Vikings are up 14 to nothing. Back in a moment to the Metrodome. Guys, that Dan Marino is one of the great all-time quarterbacks for yards. Look at that, 41,000. How about Warren Moon, including his CFL days? 55,000 yards passing. Now, if you add up Marino and Moon over their career and you divide it by 5,280, you come together, they have completed passes for over 55 miles. That's uh, from Times Square to Bridgeport, Connecticut. I thought you were going to say two frequent flyer tickets, first class anywhere <laughs> in the world. world. That's right. <laughs> And again next week, too. <laughs> All right, here is Moon. He is having a fantastic afternoon. And the Carter. Carter cuts back to the 15. A stick on the ball. His second touchdown of the ball game, 44 yards away. That's the problem when you face a Chris Carter. You, you tend to think of him as a possession receiver. You worry about the fives and the tens, and he gets you with a big one. That was Warren Moon's 200th career touchdown pass. Juan Braves, he kind of slices it, but it is inside of the upright. And Minnesota now leads Miami 21 to nothing. We talk about that. The problem with Carter, it's not so much, gee, can he get it to him? The guy never quits. Moon's not even looking at him initially. He's backside. He has clearly got Malone beaten there. And watch that move. Do you see that cutback? I mean, here's a guy that gets the rap as being a guy that's going to beat you 10 yards at a time. Uh-uh. He can go long. And this guy can get you with the best that have ever played. Warren Moon has directed three touchdown drives in the ball game. The first one, 84 yards. The second one, 66 yards. This one, 53 yards. You know, one thing an, an inexperienced back can get in the problem with is he can sometimes lose track of a wide receiver, especially when everybody's looking the other way. Ch check out what happens here on this last play. Watch Malone and watch him when he settles down looking the other way and watching Warren Moon. Right about now. See him look and stop. And when Warren Moon sees him stop, he thinks it's all Chris and Chris does. And it was all set up 
by the interception of Jack Del Rio. Well, Dan Marino, the Dolphins, came in here talking about running the ball, talking about forcing the uh, the offense onto the Miami defense. And what he's in the situation of now, Charlie, is he has got to throw the ball, and you don't want to do that against this defense. Minnesota up 21 to nothing with O.J. McDuffie and Mike Williams, the return man. And Revage is kind of bouncing it down the Metrodome, taken on the hop by McDuffie out to the 20. Still on his feet, and he's got to the 23 yard line. Remember the comedies that the critics and the audiences love, Wings and Frazier, they have moved to Tuesday. That's Wings at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, Frazier at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, this Tuesday on NBC. So Miami is going to have to get back in the ball game very quickly, or it could be over for them. Well, if they try to get the back in the game very quickly, Charlie, I think they're going to give up another touchdown real fast. They've got to be patient throwing the ball. And here is Kirby, and he is dropped for a loss. the ball at the 20-yard line, so it's going to be second down and 13. You mentioned just kind of in passing, this is a very tough stadium for a visiting team when they get behind. Well, it's loud, it's ugly, and it's a football crowd that's used to having, you know, the purple people leaders. They rush the quarterback. Floyd Peters came here, he rushes the quarterback. These guys attack. Marino attacks his left at the 39-yard line. Irving Fryer couldn't pull it in. It'll be third down and 13 back at the 20. And Dan Marino and Irving Fryer went back to where they were earlier in, the, in this half, going against the young guy Washington. Watch the position Washington works for right there. He knows he's got the help inside coming, coming inside for Michael Stewart. And when he gets that, he can play off a little bit. It's not man-to-man, -man, it's zone. Marino has completed only one of his last six. He has only three completions on the afternoon. Third down and 13. And he has the first down. He goes to Mike Williams at the 35-yard line. He picks up 15. A crucial third and 13, or they would have to kick. Well, third down was, was Dan Marino's time. He was shining all year, coming or in the first three games, I should say, coming in here. Look at those stats. I mean, that is unbelievable. What he is right now is very strong. What he's been today has brought that average and everything else down. All right, Miami with the first down at their own 35-yard line. The Vikings lead in the ball game, 21 to nothing. Chris Carter has caught two touchdown passes from Warren Moon, and Terry Allen scored the other one on the ground. And here's a little shovel underneath that keeps Byers. And it's good for three, maybe four yards, and that's going to be all. And that's the only kind of runs the Dolphins, I think, are going to be effectively even try to run will be the, the shovels and the draws and the, the deception-type runs because they just cannot afford to do it. This defensive line has always had the attitude going after the quarterback. Right now, they're going to go screaming for Dan Marino. Now, if somebody has to tackle the running back, it's Jack Del Rio. They say it's a linebacker's job to defend the run at this point. Second down and seven. Marino from the shotgun. Both backs in the block. He goes to the far side and the other throw is his intended receiver. And that's Mark Ingram. Yeah, I'm not really sure at this point if this Miami offense is, is, is pressing as much as, you know, Don Shula seeing his offense kind of hyperventilate. They're trying to make things happen at a little bit of a frenetic pace. You know, they settle down, relax. That'll be, that'll be the key for these guys when they go into the locker room. On third down, Marino, two of five and two first down. As time goes deep, and the pass is complete to Fryer as he goes airborne again, pulls it down again of 17, and the first down. Vincey Glenn wraps him up. 
Two things to watch for on this play we're going to see coming here. Watch the protection and watch how fast Marino gets rid of the ball. How would you like to be a safety standing back there saying, when's he going to throw it? He did. Yes. <laughs> no, eventually Glenn said, we can have coverage, and he still throws it. He shouldn't, but he does, and he'll complete it. 45-yard line, first down. He fires, comes inside, and he's going to pick up nine, close to a first down. It'll be second down and one, Barker with a stop. I like this so far for the Miami Dolphins. It, it shows no panic. Watch the hole develop right here. Keith Byers takes that handoff and cuts immediately backside, barely avoiding John Randall. But here's what the Dolphins have to do. They have to take those deep breaths. They have to take their 8 or 10 yards. They're down by 21. You're not going to get 21 in one drive anyway I can think of. They've got to get them 7. There's the rushing yardage. That was the 8th play of the drive. This is the ninth. Here's the first down. And Kirby has it. 29-yard line. A pickup of seven and the first down. Ed McDaniel with the tackle for Minnesota. For this drive, quieting the crowd. Again, the Vikings are up 21 to nothing. That's the best way to take this crowd really out of it is for Don Shula's offense to start moving the ball at a very patient, very methodical pace. Then suddenly the crowd starts worrying about the concession stand. Marino play action. Has pressure, throws, he's throwing this away. And that's a rule change from last year. When they roll out like that, they being the quarterback, get outside of the tight end, you can go ahead and just dump it off and avoid the loss, providing you get it to the line of scrimmage, which well, he did. Watch the end of this here. There's been sort of a sort of a rhubarb between these two teams that the defensive line of the Vikings goes low at the quarterback and goes after quarterback knees. Yeah, maybe a little argument there. Look, look at Marino. He caught him right on that. Right on that right leg, got him on a brace, and uh, Parker, that's nothing uh, unintentional. They intentionally go way higher, so after the quarterback. Right at the hip. Yep. And, but when he was low, he realized he just kind of slid off him. I like what I saw. All right, here's the hand off the curve. There's absolutely nothing there. It's going to be third down. Robert Harris making the tackle. You know, Charlie, just to follow up that thing about going low on the quarterback, Tony Dungy is a believer here in Minnesota that what you do is you teach your defensive lineman like Barker to go about waist to thigh high when you're going into the quarterback. Don't go up high. Why don't you go up high? Because if your hand should accidentally hit a quarterback on the head, you're going to catch yourself a 15-yard penalty. He says, it's just not worth it. I teach him to go downstairs. Third down. Reno fires it. It is the second interception of the ball game for the Vikings. Lamar Madrid picks off Marino's errant pass. He was forcing that. Well, you mentioned what Vincey Glenn told us, that Dan Marino, unlike almost any other quarterback, if he sees an opening that others won't throw it into, Dan Marino will throw it into. And here's a great example. No business that going in there. And McGriggs makes them pay for it. And uh, you're getting to see a little bit of the fire and frustration of Dan Marino right here because he knows on the sideline that this pass, if it was thrown anywhere near this receiver, should be about shin high so no one but his guy could get to it. Great body position by McGriggs. That's the key there. Vikings take over at their own 25-yard line. They lead in the ballgame 21 to nothing. We're moving on the two-minute mark. Time remaining first half. And the Vikings staying on the ground here is Amp Lee. Normally a third down back today, but now he's in on first down. There's a two-minute warning. We'll be back in just a moment. Vikings up 21 to nothing. Dan Marino just dialing 911. <laughs> that might be the Maalox number right there. <laughs> he needs a little stomach help. I'd say he's got the old gastric juices flowing a little bit over that uh, interception. He was watching a replay of it on the big screen, and then you saw his reaction. The second interception that he has served up to the Vikings. And I'm sure there's a man next to him, Bernie Kozar there, number 19, the all-time leader for fewest interceptions thrown in his career. They kind of say, you know, I've done that a few times too, Dan. I don't quite have the arm you have, but I've done that a few times. Second down and five, Vikings at their own 30-yard line. As 
besides the last two minutes of the first half. Minnesota up 21 to nothing. Here's the middle screen, and it is saturated. Terry Allen hangs on to it. The Brian Cox and company were all there for the Dolphins. That didn't fool anybody. Well, at this point, with this much time left in the first half and a 21 nothing lead, you're not looking to impress people and take chances. You're looking to go in with two touchdown leads. Third down and five. Throws for the first down and he gets it. And once again, it is Jake Reed who pulls it in. And the Vikings convert on third and five. Well, here's a good veteran receiver move by Jake Reed. We talked about him being uh, more aggressive. Here's a case of him being smart. Catches, watch him roll. Hey, that's right, I gotta get out of bounds. His fifth reception, 63 yards. The ball at the 38-yard line. Good day so far for Jake Reed, but when you start worrying about Jake Reed, it's, uh, oh yeah, Chris Carter. And Moon to throw, four-man rush, pump fake. Goes back underneath the coverage, and speaking of Carter, there he is. The down the sideline, picks up the first down, and then steps out of bounds. He has 15 yards on the play. And I think he avoided a high forearm shiver yeah, as he yeah. came down the sideline. <laughs> it looks like the same kind Ooh. of thing Lennox Lewis ran into in the yeah. second round last night to lose his heavyweight title. The only difference is, is as Chris Carter comes from the top of the screen across the field, watch him underneath. We talked about the five, ten-yard passes. Watch the end what happens here. Lennox Lewis walked into his punch. Whoa! And Chris Carter almost ran into his. Warren Moon has completed his last five throws. First down. He wants to set up a screen. He is being rushed to the sack, and he throws it away. Brian Cox was in hot pursuit of Warren Moon. He just couldn't catch up to him. Who says 38-year-old guys slow down or don't have strength? You see him straight arm Cox? He knew Cox was right there. Kind of slammed a little arm into him as he got away. So it'll be second down and 10. Warren catching his breath. You know, Cox came completely free. Watch him coming from the left side, 51, right up the middle. By all rights, this should be a sack. There's the straight arm. Ooh, you know, Cox is a guy who loves getting fired up. And a quarterback doing that to a linebacker? You can hear about that in 10. Second and 10. 116, time remaining first half. Well, the key here is going to be who they caught pushing who. If it stands, 36 yards. Spot the ball at the eight-yard line. First and goal. They caught the rookie Sean Hill for, for pushing off at the end of that play against Palmer. Now watch what happens when this ball is underthrown. Pass interference on a defense, on a cornerback. Penalty for time. Take the result of the play with the completed pass. First down. Watch that right arm. It was the right arm into the chest on David Palmer down the field. Remember the contact rule, past five yards, you can't do it. There's that push with the right arm into his chest. First down, goal to go. Still over a minute to go in the first half. Moon hands off to Robert Smith, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and goal to go. And the Vikings simply taking their time. Minnesota with two timeouts remaining. The Dolphins have three. And the ball at the eight-yard line. I think Danny Green and this Minnesota offense, if they're going to run right now in this situation, is much better off with the speed outside of the Dolphins of running a quick little trap, running quick hitting things inside. And then the throw. Little pump fake. All the time in the air. Now he is safe. He throws it up for good. Chris Carter is 
third touchdown. Yeah, Warren, you meant to do that. <laughs> you see that smile on Moon's face. He knows he got lucky by a receiver that just went through everybody to get himself his third touchdown of the day. All right, here is the extra point, and it is good. What do you get when proper planning meets desperation? Oh, the heck with it. Let's just say you get lucky. <laughs> you get lucky. I mean, if this is the NBA, this is a jump ball. The other guy never got off the ground. The celebration down late. Now watch Tim Bowens. Now this is just up for grabs. Forget it. You can't tell me you expect him to catch that. And here's a guy, Don Shula. Definitely expect his guy to come up with the ball. Oh, man. Troy Vincent, they miss you. The Vikings scoring 14 points off of the two Miami turnovers. And Minnesota is up 28 to nothing with 24 seconds left in the first half. McDuffie and Williams are deep. This is just kicked along the ground. A flag is down, a scramble for it at the 50-yard line. As you know, of course, if it goes more than five yards, it can be recovered by the kicking team. But we have a flag. Here's Howard Rowe. Vikings offside. So what happens when you tell the kickoff team you're going to line it into the front guys? Offside on a kicking team. Penalty declined. First down. Be sure to stay with us at, for halftime. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza, the NFL Live Halftime Report with Greg Gumbel, Mike Ditka, scores and highlights from all around the National Football League. In addition, Greg has an interview with San Diego linebacker Junior Seau. That's coming up in a few minutes. Reno goes sidelines. It is Ingram. He slips the tackle. He goes out. That will stop the clock at the 42-yard line. And a look at the timeouts remaining. Miami with three. The Vikings have two, and we have 18 seconds left in the first half. About 10 yards to get into realistic field goal range. I know Stojanovic has a strong leg, but so far in 94, NFL kickers are 0 for 13 outside of 50 yards or better. He has a career-long 59. He also hooked one already today. Yes, he did. He missed from 41 yards out. Flag is down. And the pass is incomplete. It was a screen to Kirby, and Marino was just backpedaling for his life as he was being chased by James Harris. And Harris, you will recall, is the player for the Vikings in preseason who was ejected for his second quarterback hit and Offside, was fined. Number 99 defense, five-yard penalty, first down. He was fined $7,500. The reason he got there is he got an early start. <laughs> he left before the ball. Well, yeah, you're going to see a lot of that in the second half from this Minnesota defensive line. They are just, if, a, if an offensive lineman's forearm twitches, an involuntary muscle motion, those guys are going. You know who, you know who loves this defensive line the most? The defensive back from the Minnesota Vikings. 15 seconds left in the half. The ball just outside the 36-yard line. And if you need the yards in your Dan Marino here, I think you go back over to the clock to show 18 seconds. Thank you. I think you go back over at the rookie Washington, number 20 over there, get your fry, Irving Fryer working on him, get you down in field goal range. Get down in field goal range on this play, then you can take your shots into the end zone. has pressure. It is pulled in over the middle by Kirby. He cuts back and may have missed the first down. He had it and then he cut back. Miami will take a timeout. They'll stop the clock. Eight seconds. Left first half. 
Well, I don't care what people say about Dan Marino not being as quick or as fast. Watch his feet. Those aren't happy feet. Those are smart feet because he knows if he doesn't <laughs> move them, the line's going to get him. Kirby does a great job and turns a great job into almost a bad job. Almost loses that first down. Watch the feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Won't learn that in any Samba class in the United States. We ask you about the little half, half step and the slide step. It looks almost as if he's back to 100% after the Achilles. He said, no way, no way. He said, 60 to 70 tops. Yeah, yeah but you know, any great player, you see he's got that little uh, hitch in his get-along and his gait as he walks. A any great player always sort of underestimates his abilities and his, his rehab. And, you know, he says, well, I'm never, I'm just not where I was. You're never going to be where you were, Dan. Um, you also happen to still be the best, if not, or one of the best, if not the best quarterbacks in the league. And you saw on that right ankle, he has a little small brace and lifts his toes up because of the Achilles so he can have a little more balance as he bounces around trying to avoid defensive tackle from the shotgun. He goes in zone, has a man there, right at the goal line, touchdown. It is O.J. McDuffie from 26 yards away. And the Dolphins managed to score with two seconds left in the first half. Tell you what, folks, don't stick a fork in these Miami Dolphins yet. They are not through. And if you got a leader on the field that's going to pump you up and get you going and you have faith, you can come back from anything. It's Dan Marino. O.J. McDuffie, middle of the screen. That's just momentum carries it carries him in there. And I don't know why the defensive back of the Minnesota Vikings were playing so soft all the way into the end zone. It's one thing to use the end zone as your backboard. It's another thing to be in there and let the receiver get all the way down there for that, that six points. Tony Dungy of the Minnesota Vikings now has something to get on his defense about at the half. And Don Shula and the Dolphins have something to be very happy and positive about. Miami wants a timeout. Two points an option. I really, I really think you have to go for two points in this situation. Uh, what do you have to lose? Your momentum is definitely not on your defensive side of the ball. And for Dan Marino, that is his 308th career touchdown pass. As you know, of course, second in the NFL only to Franz Arkansas. That is updated. Dan Marino closes the gap on Francis. Good nailing ladder part of next season, everybody says. Yeah, you know, but Dan Marino and Warren Moon are quarterbacks that are both at that same point of their careers where, you know, how long are you going to play? What are you going to do? Well, I'm taking it year to year. And Dan knows, I think, uh, last year he would have had a heck of a shot of getting back to the Super Bowl if he hadn't have been hurt this year. He very has a lot of faith in his running game, a lot of faith in his defense. But the bottom line on Miami, this is the guy that carries the ball. And they go for two. Slicing through and then leaning in the ball comes loose and it's going to be blown dead before Kirby could get into the end zone as Carlos Jenkins, who yesterday was pumped a mile high, oh, I, I, leads the defense. And Kirby's hurt. But you, we talked to Carlos Jenkins yesterday and I, I didn't want to know whether to say he was very enthusiastic or, need, enthusiastic or needed a rabies shot. <laughs> He was ready 24 hours See the ago. Job, the job he does against Kirby as they bend Kirby back. Oh, wow, whoa. Don't watch that if, when they no. replay that thing again. But he stops right at about the one foot line. Watch Kirby be met chest to chest right here. There is some strength from a 215-pound linebacker. And then the reaction of Carlos Jenkins. Sound effects provided by Randy Cross. <laughs> Clock is stopped with two seconds. The Dolphins still to kick off to the Vikings before the first half can come to an official close as Terry Kirby is assisted to his feet. And you saw that struggle between Kirby, between Kirby and Jenkins, and that was all as a result of the strength of Jenkins working against Kirby, and then the pile starts. We're going to run this one more time. Look away if you don't want to see it. 
Uh, this would happen on AstroTurf. This happens on grass. It's a function of physics and leverage and fulcrum points. And legs are not supposed to bend like that. So we'll now put that one away in the archive. And of course, as soon as we come back to start the second half, John Dockery on the sideline, that uh, we will try and get an updated report on the condition of Jerry Kirby. And we'll pass it on to you as soon as it is officially given to us. But now with two seconds left, Stojanovic to kick off. Ismael is the deep back for the Vikings. Here's Kadri, the brother of Rocket. You know, at this point, I don't know which locker room I'd want to be in uh, the least. Do you want to be in Miami, so he's going to be ripping and snorting after giving up 21 points, or do you want to be in Minnesota, where Tony Dungy and that defensive staff is going to go nuts after giving up a touchdown like that to the Dolphins? That was a 49-yard drive in three plays. That was Dan Marino, being Dan Marino. bounces it along. Clock starts as soon as the ball is touched in the field of play, and it will finally run down. And that will take us to the end of the first half, with the Vikings out in front, 28 to 6. Stay with us for halftime in New York City. Halftime, the Vikings leading the Dolphins by a score of 28 to 6. I'm Charlie Jones along with Randy Cross and John Dockery who has joined us on the sideline. The first half you could say was Moon over Miami. Warren Moon completed 17 of 21. He threw for 215 yards in the first half including three touchdowns. The, the surprising part really I mean I was anticipating Dan Marino being under pressure and there was a chance that he'd make mistakes. He made two big mistakes those interceptions in the first half and they really took advantage of it from Minnesota. That's the biggest difference to me. This game is about gone like I expected. It was just two mistakes by Marino that made the difference. All right, let's look at the official numbers as we take a look at the Coors Light halftime statistics. And what you look at is the bottom there. The, the, the opponent's po points off of turnovers. And just imagine what Dan Marino's stats would look like uh, if he had not gotten those last, you know, 49, 50 yeah. yards or so on that last drive. at the very end on that last drive. So. Uh, this is a situation Dan Marino's faced with coming in here where it's uh, one of those, okay, show us show us that Hall of Fame. All right, let's go down to John Dockery. Doc? You know, Ch Charlie had a chance to talk to both coaches, and, of course, Dennis Green is really happy with what's happening. He said, we spread the Dolphin defense out with three wide receivers and some other formations, and uh, Warren Moon is making the right decision. He's learning the offense better. He also said, obviously, the running game is working, and that's making it click. Uh, Don Schuler on the other side of the coin, obviously not real happy. He simply said, hey, we haven't made any plays. And the play that he called the backbreaker in the first half was the catch by Carter down in the end zone. I asked him, how do you fix the woes from the first half? He said, hey, we simply have to make some plays. As far as Kirby's injury goes, he's not out yet. They're still examining him. And as soon as I have an update, I'll get it to you. All right, good. Thank you, Doc. So he bring, Doc, John Dockery brings up a good point with John, John, Don Shula said this whole Miami Dolphins team has to be kind of like the cornerback you're always saying defensive backs have to have the shortest memories in the world they've got to come down with a case of amnesia come out here on this field right now and it's like, first half what first half all right the Dolphins will have the first opportunity on offense here in the second half so Juan Reves will be kicking off O.J. McDuffie and Mike Williams, the deep backs on the return. Miami trailing 28 to 6. The third quarter is underway. And on the return is O.J. McDuffie. And he is spun under just past the 25-yard line. a look at the leaguer Dan Marino as he comes out and his comparison with Warren Moon in the first half. And 9 of 21, 143, one touchdown, two interceptions. They loom so large. That's, that's very un-Dan marino and uh, Warren Moon couldn't have done any better. It's 5 of 5 to Chris Carter. Matter of fact, last two weeks, he's 14 of 15 passes in Chris Carter's direction. So Miami starts first down their own 25-yard line.
Martin's out throwing passes to beat the key fire. Fires an excellent receiver coming out of the backfield and a very tough football player for the Dobbin. There's there are some who say he is the toughest man on the team. Hey, you talk about the, the patience necessary, and Dan Marino has to move these guys down the field and not worry about the points involved here. Let's see Danny smiles. He's definitely relaxed. Um, what they have to do, Byers must be involved. Keith Jackson must be involved. You know, where was Keith Jackson in the first half? Such a big part of the Miami offense last week when they totally just dominated the New York Jets. Second and six, Bernie Parmelis is the tailback. But now Marino operates out of the shotgun. Second and six. And he swings to the right side to Parmelis. And Parmelis is pulled down, but he's going to pick up the first down. Now let's go to, to uh, John Dockery for a report on... Uh, Terry Kirby. Charlie, you know, I just got the report on Terry Kirby injured right before the half running back from the Dolphins, and they said it's his right knee. There is some damage. They don't know how extensive, but they are definitely sure that he will not be back today. I'll keep you posted, Charlie. Back to you. All right. Thank you, John. Miami with a first down, their first first down of the second half. And here is Parmelin. And he's going to pick up uh, three, maybe four yards on the play. Now, interesting, now, the Vikings have put Miami in a situation that they wanted them in. And we were, I was at least, kind of stunned when we were told, we want Miami to throw. Well, they really do. What they don't, Dennis Green and the Vikings don't want to have happen is Dan Marino would be able to run the ball against their defense and throw when he wants to. What they want him to do is not be able to run and throw because he has to. Big, big difference from a quarterback and a defensive lineman standpoint. Go from the shotgun, it's second down and seven. Little shovel pass underneath to Byers. Byers up the middle of the 45, 40 yard line of the Vikings. 19 yards on the play, first down at the Viking 40 yard line. Well, I'd say so far that Miami uh, case of amnesia is working pretty good. They've got that first half out of their system and they're just going right at and taking it to the defense of the Minnesota Vikings. Am I the only one, or do you notice a little bit of that, that fire and that pep yes. that was in that Minnesota defense right now isn't there? It's not there. It's, you, know, you come out, you lose 28 to 6. It's that natural letdown that you have. And Rito dumps this one over the middle of the drop by Keith Byers. He wanted to go deep to Irving Fryer, but he was covered, and he just came off it to drop it off to Byers. See, Marino's got great passing stats, and he's a wonderful quarterback, one of the greatest he's ever played this game. The bottom line for Danny Marino and his quest and his dream to get into the Super Bowl, he's got to have a 1,000-yard rusher, and he has never had a 1,000-yard rusher. The one time he got to the Super Bowl, the game at Stanford against the 49ers and the team I played on, that's how we beat Dan Marino and them. We, we took it to him physically, controlled the back and the ground, and he had to throw him at the game also. Second and Dan from the shotgun. something on that his shoulders are parallel to the line of scrimmage he doesn't turn he doesn't set the ball is about shoulder high and all of a sudden it is relief i mean he really has the quickest release in football watch his shoulders and watch the speed of this release watch them cock and turn right now they're almost parallel to the line of scrimmage one of the things the defensive back reads are the shoulders and that imperceptible little cock most quarterback has before they throw the ball there is no cock in there there is absolutely no hits in his motion. If he goes from 0 to 100 now, and that looks quick and slow motion. And he goes for a side and it's in the blue. McDuffie, the intended receiver. It is fourth down and 10. And Miami not wasting any time. They're going for it on fourth and 10. This is a uh, this is no real big thing. I think to Don Shula and his staff. You're down now, you're down 28 to 6. You know you need something to happen on this drive. And you sense the defense is a little out of it. The crowd's into it, but I don't think the defense is. Four wide receivers. Marino on the run throws first down. 32 yard line. It is Mark Ingram picking up 18 yards. And what made that work? The scramble of Dan Marino, and it hurts every step he takes. You know, Dan Marino is not a scrambler. Dan Marino is a shuffler. 
We talked about how good he was on third down. Well, let's count that one as a third down, too, because when Dan Marino gets in these situations where he needs a critical 8, 9, 10 yards, he gets it. You know who his biggest fan is? That guy right there, Don Schuler. 22-yard line of the Vikings, first down. Opening drive, second half. Miami trailing 28 to 6. Running out of time, gets it off. And throws quick. Pulled down at the seven-yard line. It's Mike Williams as he gets to maybe the two. They're down now on the two-yard line, mainly because of the fact that Dan Marino has got the poise, and Miami's offense has the fire, and right now, Minnesota's expecting uh, this crowd and this offense they're playing against to be much more impressed with their defense than really is warranted by the way they're playing. They are completely flat, and Marino's taking advantage of Denny Green's defense. And the team of fourth and ten. And here's the handoff to Farley, and he is stuck. It'll be second down, goal to go. The ball just outside the two-yard line as Mark Higgs comes in. He's been kind of the missing man in the backfield for the Dolphins. Last week in the ball game in the first half, did not come in in the second half. Don Shula said he was looking for the spark. Now with Terry Kirby injured, it's up to Mark Higgs, leading rusher for the Dolphins the last three years. to Higgs, who places a block, throws, pass complete, and into the end zone for the touchdown. Greg Beatty, the third tight end, he's also the snapper, scores a touchdown, and Marino just drilled him. I tell you, no one else in this league throws that pass, and nobody else's receivers in this league expect it to be coming. Watch this. You gotta be joking me. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful effort, don't get me wrong. But he puts this thing on a bullet. Mag M Lamar McGriggs is right there. He puts it inside a one-foot circle. And now Don Shula sees the touchdown. How long does this decision take? Go for two, guys. Second time in the ball game that the Dolphins have gone for two. They failed the first time. It's 28 to 12. Four wide receivers. Marino fires. Two points. So the Dolphins have cut it in half. They now trail 28-14. Being economical gas, think what you'll save. By AT&T, we help put your world within reach. And by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's now. Buy a large two-topping crunchy thin crust pizza and we'll give you a medium pizza free. Outdoors, that is the skyline of Minneapolis. Indoors here in the Metrodome, the Miami Dolphins, in the last four minutes and 39 seconds of the ball game. Remember, they scored with two seconds to go in the first half. They have scored 14 points. They're right back in the middle of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a situation. You see, the numbers in that phone have changed from 9-1-1 to 3-4-6 now after the success of the offense and Dan Marino have had so far. You see the scoring drive from from just a little while earlier and that what that was that was a statement sort of a here I am in your face by Dan Marino to the defense that to be honest did not stand up to it at all so Pete Stoyanovic will be kicking off for the Dolphins facing the sideline Warren Moon the Viking offense has not been on the field in the second half yet Kadri Ismael who is a deep back on the return and Kadri will pull it in at the 8 yard line the 15. Here is the reverse. He picks up a block. It is Robert Smith. The flag is down. And around the near side and down the sideline is Robert Smith on the reverse. But a marker at the 36-yard line. 32 yards on the return if it does stand up. And the referee, Howard Rowe. It will go against the Vikings. And remember, it was a Viking first half. They got every break in the world, including that up for grabs touchdown pass Holding that Carter had. Number 85 receiving team. 10 yard penalty. First down. Brent Novoselsky, the number three tied in, will step aside for a moment. We'll be back. Don't go away. We've got a good one. 
This is Charlie Jones along with Randy Cross and John Dockery as we look down from the top of the Metrodome. The Vikings have the ball at their own 26 yard line. Costly penalty. Takes the Vikings offense from a situation they could go deep and take a chance to one where they better not make a mistake. Very cautious and they open up on the ground with Terry Allen. And he's going to have a yard. That's going to be it. It'll be second down and nine. Of course, Minnesota already, we have, what, 10 minutes to go in the third. They would be content with taking some of the time off the clock. Well, you know, Warren Moon and Danny Green both know the strength of this offense is not, you know, the deep down the field. We've already said that enough. They don't do that very often. The strength of this team is running the ball with Terry Allen and getting the intermediate, the intermediate time after 10, 12, 15. If the receiver can take the long way, great. Otherwise, take the yard. Second and eight. Darrell Malone was there. And it's going to be third down today. Hey, just look in the eyes. Look at Chris Carter's eyes. Look at the guys in the huddle for the Minnesota Vikings. They seem to be suffering from the same thing that their defense is. They're just quite not as fired up and springing and bouncing and going. And, you know, they, they look like a, a heavyweight fighter who had a guy hurt at the end of the first half, and now they look like a guy that didn't warm up enough before the fight started. They're down eight. Carter goes across in motion, moving the throw. He goes deep over the And he steps out of bounds as he makes his reverse turn inside the 40-yard line of Miami. And remember, third down and eight with a huge conversion. And Tom Olivadotti, the Miami defensive coordinator, knows what's happening. What's happening is they're picking on the defensive backfield of the Miami Dolphins. That's hurt and it's been suffering. This time they're working on J.B. Brown, the veteran. Ismail does a good job. Now he does his Three Stooges imitation here at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he picked up 28 yards. First down, 44-yard line of Miami. Play action fake on first down. Pump fake. Wants to go deep. Runs out of time. In reality, he throws it away. And we'll step aside for a moment as we go to New York for an update. Greg? All right, Charlie, and we'll go to Indianapolis. Roosevelt Potts, three receptions for 55 yards on this drive, culminating with a 12-yard catch from Jim Harbaugh. The extra point pulls the Colts even with the Cleveland Browns, 14-14 in the third. Charlie, back to you. Roosevelt Potts is a man. <laughs> yes, he is. He is a man. That guy can bring it big time. 250-pound fullback, how do you like that? Ooh. Second down and 10, 43 yards. Watch on the back side. The guy to watch right here is Todd Stucy. He's going to pull on this counter. He just does not quite get there fast enough. Randall McDaniel pulls in front of him, gets a nice block on Brian Cox, but Stucy got all that 300 and some odd pounds working, working, working wide. Unfortunately, the guy he was supposed to block was inside. And we talked about the air brakes on Bernard Daphne earlier. They're on the only on that model earlier. A moment ago, third and eight. The Vikings converted. It's now third down and four. Luna Shiner is down and it is juggled and incomplete. Well, Warren Moon's been in this offense now for about six months or so. I guess you could say he's been learning it. One trick this old dog knows. This is a familiar looking pass from Warren Moon's days in the run and shoot. Good arm over by Jake Reed and Warren Moon just floats this thing up hoping that J.B. Brown doesn't react and look back and you know J.B. Brown right now seems to be the defensive back of choice for Warren Moon these receivers. 52 yard field goal attempt. Wide Reveille with Saxon Holden. from 52 yards away. 
That makes NFL kickers now 0 for 14 from 50 plus. You got to get it low. The danger when you get it low, unfortunately, the goalposts are a little too high. <laughs> Seven thirty-six. That is the time remaining in the third. Twenty-eight fourteen. Miami trailing now by fourteen. The Dolphins have the ball as they take over at the forty-two yard line. That was where the ball was held for the field goal attempt that failed. That's one of the new rules. Here's Marino from the shotgun. And he can manage just to piece together a sixty-yard touchdown drive here. Brand new ball here. That's all, huh? Yeah. That's all he needs. Little swing right side to buy it. Well, he did it the last time. Now let's uh, check in with an audio report from John Dodger. You know, Charlie, Randy was uh, just talking about the flatness of the Viking defense and the offense before Moon hit that big pass. Well, it was interesting because defensive back for coach Richard Solomon went to each of his defensive backs. He went to McGriggs, Washington, and Glenn and company and Scott and said, hey, let's get back in this. Let's get a little more interested. Let's get a little more excited. So they were flat. Let's see what happens right now. Second and six, Marino from the shotgun again. to the hands of Bernie Parmalee. How many balls have gone off of the hands of receivers for the Dolphins? Five. Five drops so far what by the Dolphins. What took us so long to have that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Five drops. That, that's, that's the fastest way. You know, John Docker was just saying that the, 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 the Minnesota Vikings need people to get fired up. The quickest way to fire somebody up is to bat a ball up in the air, cause a turnover, and reverse it momentum because Don Shula knows if he pumps his defense up, he's got a real shot at this and this offense stays pumped. Third and six. And a one-hand grab pulled in by O.J. McDuffie. 11 yards and the first down. Marino was off target. McDuffie had to battle it and he pulled it in. Good reception. It really is, and it's another example. Remember, we said he's not a scrambler, he's a shuffler. Watch him shuffle here. Feels a little pressure, just kind of shuffles and moves his feet, steps up a little. And what kind of a confidence, confident feeling must it be to know you've got a Dan Marino, a Joe Montana, a John Elway? This quality of a quarterback affects every guy in his offensive play. And today, it's that warm moon to that category. Exactly. First down, 42 yard line of the Vikings. Reno scrambles, he's throwing this one away. Last three plays defensively, a little something has started to happen. The defensive line is starting to get down into the legs right in front of Dan Marino's face. What's number 99, James Harris? They didn't get much penetration in the first half. They didn't really have to. They had such good coverage. There's Harris. Just uh, didn't need to pull him down. Just sort of general principle he did. And look at this. He's talking about a little body language. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Ralph, you boys. <laughs> he does get involved, doesn't he? Second and ten. Here's that little shallow pass underneath to Keith Byers. And Byers stretches out. Let's see where they make the mark. It may be just short of the first down. That was second down and ten. And right now, from a score standpoint, is the Dolphins are in four-down territory. They were earlier, they still are. One more time. Watch, watch Keith Byers' shoulders and watch when he starts going upfield, the acceleration right there. He's going first down all the way from there. And, I, you know, this is great. This is a situation for Dan Marino to really play out from this defense. They haven't been aggressive. They haven't been strong. Give them a chance to bite. Third down under a yard to go for the first down play action fake wanted to go Jack Del Rio, 55. We mentioned big plays at big times. They bit a little on the fake, and you're going to add the number two to the list of passes. Once Dan Marino sees that one, he knows he shouldn't have thrown that one. Watch it again. Over the middle. I've got my guy. 
Wrong guy. And the Vikings got the ball back in. Watch two things. Watch Parmalee coming out of the backfield and watch this section of the field and see how many purple jerseys there are in that little circle by the 75th anniversary patch when Marino throws this ball. One, two. Well, there's four people in that area, and unfortunately for Dan Marino, three of them have purple jerseys on. And the Vikings have the ball in the turnover at the 32-yard line, first down. Minnesota leads 28-14. Moon comes down, a little soft top. And the pass is complete, the 35-yard line to Chris Carter. J.B. Brown was there. I'd be very careful if I was the defensive backs of the Minnesota, I mean, of the Miami Dolphins right now. These little underneath passes, you got to know that isn't just to get little dinks and dunks of yardage. That's Warren Moon and the receivers trying to set him up for something downfield. You saw Dan Marino in the towel. That's a fresh towel. The other one that he had when he came to the sideline, he spiked it. Big time. He is upset. Second and seven. Upset at himself, and he should be. Moon comes to the right flat this time. Back and complete the run. And uh, give him the spot of the catch, the 37-yard line. So he goes for a couple. It's going to be third down and about five yards to go for the first down. Well, the key thing here now, Charlie, is, is will the Miami defense do what everybody hopes in Miami they do and everybody in Minnesota knows going to happen? Warren Moon is going to find Chris Carter on third down here. If you find Chris Carter on your side of the field, you've got to find a chance or somebody to double team this guy. Look what he's done on third down, and his best receiver, third down, first down, and second down is Chris Carter. Third down, five. But it was going to Robert Smith. So it will be fourth down and five, and Mike Saxon will kick it away for the Vikings. It's a great job by the Miami defense, really making absolutely nothing out of a bad situation when Dan Marino threw that interception. My Minnesota couldn't do a thing with it. Now it's up to Dan Marino and the offense to have a little bit of amnesia, for, 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 pretend that last mistake didn't happen. O.J. McDuffie is the return man. The Dolphin defense stepping up, three and out with the kick. And it's taken at the 23. Looking for a block, cut back. And into a wall at the 34-yard line. 40 yards on the kick, 11 yards on the return. Lamar McGrigg was waiting for him. O.J. McDuffie does what every special teams coach teaches his receivers to do. Get the ball, see a crack, take it upfield. Go to some opening. Whoops. <laughs> there is no opening. That's sort of what a, a bug feels like when it gets into the grill of a semi. Black. <laughs> Back you go. That was a great shot by a guy that's got plenty of playing time. Got himself an in interception earlier today, and he's, uh, he's doing it all for Danny Green. A little special teams, a little defense. As far as the Dolphins are concerned, there's plenty of time left. 3.38 time remaining in the third. And this time they start from the 34-yard line. Marino has been intercepted three times by Lamar McGriggs, who just made that stop. That's what Randy was talking about. Jack Del Rio has two interceptions. And we have flags. And finger pointing. I think that follows automatically. All right, the offensive linemen are taught that right after they teach them how to put those tight jerseys on. <laughs> Prior to the snap, we got a neutral zone infraction, number 95 on a defense. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. I, I believe he means 97. <laughs> Watch Thomas, uh, he's in that cock position we were talking about. The head comes up, he's trying to time the snap. That's just anticipation. That's a defensive lineman not watching the ball and saying 1,000, 1,000, he must be going. The advantage from being in that cock position. Well, the real advantage is you can see the ball better and shouldn't jump offside. Uh, <laughs> what it really does, it forces double teams inside between one of the guards and the center and should free up man-on-man -man blocking for the other tackle. First and five. Four-man rush. Reno throws, has a man wide open. Pass is complete. Worthing Fryer. Fryer lost the defender. And he cut off the route. was about three yards in front of him. First down. 
And you talk about that release, and nowhere is that release more critical than when Dan Marino sees this kind of an opening. Look at him push off Anthony Parker, number 27. I mean, you give a guy a 10-yard cushion to give him five more in your back pedal, you're, they're going to do that to you all day long. First down, Viking 42. See if there's something on the ground for Bernie Parmalee, and there's not. Mark it for a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Most of the time, the Vikings going with a four-man rush. They blitz, what, half a dozen times max a game? Maybe. They blitzed the first couple of possessions on Dan Marino. Haven't done much since then. They like to show it. We've got it. Then they come back and stay with their four-man front. And there you see it. And they catch it. Robert Harris gets the first sack for the Vikings. So credit that Dolphin offensive line. They've given Dan good protection. Well, there's two ways sacks usually happen. One is when you just get clean beat, and twi the second one is when the pocket collapses. And here, the pocket just collapses on Dan Marino. Harris gets through there, and the rarest of rarest things happen. Robert Harris gets in on a sack for Dan Marino. Dan Marino does not go down very often. Third down and 14. Three knockdowns, one sack, no deflection. He wants to throw back to a screen. Here is Keith Byler down the sideline and out of bounds. Good reaction by the defense of the Vikings. And it was Dwayne Washington who hurried back to cut him off as he tried to come down the near sideline. Don Shula's head will go for it. It's fourth down. Well, on that third down play, the, the Minnesota Vikings defense did something a little bit different. They uh, dropped their defensive tackle, Henry Thomas, in coverage, and he's the one that came back and made the tackle on that play. Now, Dan Marino and the, and the Dolphins are going to go for it here on first down, Charlie, and here's the situation. Get the matchup, find him and fire, and put him against the rookie Washington. There he is, he's got it. Irving Fryer. He needed eight, he got 14, he has the first down. Dan Marino's not too pumped right now, is he? And Danny Green knows his defense and his offense are just off that little bit. They're bringing the blitz. They're trying to pressure Dan Marino, and they know where they're going. Fryer on Washington. Marino getting pressure, hangs in the whole way. Does he ever take his eyes off Fryer at any time of being hit? And does Don Shula ever take his eyes off Don, Dan Marino when he goes down? 25-yard line, first down. Deep over the middle, around the under throw. It's incomplete. Keith Jackson, the intended receiver, second and ten. You saw Dan Marino turn around real quick and just point to the sideline. You know, like... We're doing it. We're coming back. And watch Shula's reaction. Sees the completion. Looks over at Danny. Says, okay, yeah, I know. Nice pass. <laughs> Second and 10, 25-yard line. They were picking on the rookie, Dwayne Washington. Filed that away. They may come back at him if they need him again on this drive. There's the left side the right cornerback for the Vikings. Looking right, Puck wants to go deep, has a match around, he has a touchdown to Keith Jackson. 25 yards. Where was Keith Jackson? Keith Jackson was where Dan Maria wanted him to until he really needed him. Those defensive backs were so concerned with the wide receivers Keith Jackson gets right behind everybody. Watch the coverage underneath. There's Keith Jackson at the bottom of the screen in the slot. Everybody's moving up on the wide receivers. McGrig lets Jackson get right behind him. That puts Dan Marino, Charlie, over 300 yards passing. First quarterback to do that. It had been 39 games since the Vikings had given that up. And here is the extra point attempt that is good. That is 21 unanswered points for Miami that started with two seconds to go 
That's the end of the first half. And now we have 40 seconds left in the third. And Dan Marino, he takes the drink and he's ready to go again as soon as they need him. Okay, the two people to watch here, you got to take a look. Look at Jackson. Look at McGrigg. Watch what happens when Marino sort of steps up and gives it a little pump fake. The wide receiver stops. The defensive back stop. One catch. Keith Jackson doesn't stop. He kept running, running that post corner route, and he's wide open. And we have 40 seconds remaining in the third. With Gary Stevens, the offensive coach, offensive coordinator for the Dolphins, talking to Dan. You know, I don't know how much is actually being absorbed by Marino right now. This guy is so pumped right now. You know, he gets as pumped and as up as any quarterback. And right now, I mean, his blood, blood pressure is about 350 over 250. Reno now 22 of 41. You mentioned over 300 yards. Three touchdowns. The first 300-yard pass are allowed. And now 40 games against the Vikings, enforcing exactly what you were talking about a moment ago. 66 yards on the drive in seven plays. Well, his passing stats are ugly but effective. And John Tierlink, the defensive line coach of the Vikings, knows uh, those guys up front. It's their job. They're the ones that held Dan Marino down in the first half. And they're the ones right now that haven't gotten to him enough, enough pressure. They've sacked him once, but they haven't gotten in his face enough. Pete Stoyanovich is kicking off with Kadri Ismael, the deep back on the return. And he takes it to five. He's after the 25. And across the 25. They're going to mark at the 28 yard line. If you've enjoyed the action in this ball game, this is the first half of the doubleheader on NBC. Look what's in store for you. San Diego undefeated going against the Raiders. Jeff Hostetler proving last week that he can lead the Raiders possibly to a playoff. A very slow start. New England at Detroit. Some of you to see Houston, Cincinnati, and then Pittsburgh at Seattle. For those of you in the Pittsburgh area in the Seattle area, that is a late ball game, a 3 o'clock start on the West Coast. That is not a mistake. You want to see a little firepower at Raider Charger game. Jeff Hostetler has got that touchback deep. And Stan Humphreys is the league's number one rated quarterback. All right, here goes Warren Moon. And he hands out to Terry Allen. And now, the Miami Dolphins defense. They are the ones who have stepped it up along with their offense in the second half. And the Vikings still stay flat. Exactly. The first half, it was the Viking offense and the Viking defense that was getting up and, you know, giving the high fives and screaming and yelling. And the enthusiasm was coming from that, from them and this crowd. It was contagious. Right now, both teams have had a case of amnesia. Miami's forgotten what happened in the first half. And Warren Moon and the Vikings have just forgotten. After three, Vikings lead it 28-21. We start the fourth quarter. Vikings at their 28-yard line, second and 10. Moon fires. Pass is complete. First down, Jake Reed. 17 yards. Jake Reed certainly asserting himself in this ball game, learning to intimidate. Six for 77. Well, you've heard the term alligator arms, Charlie, where the receiver goes over the middle and those arms just won't extend. Look at those arms extend on Jake Reed. And the guy that threw that ball was just as tough as Jake Reed was because Warren Moon just gets pummeled here. And I, it still amazes me how these great quarterbacks can never take their eyes off the receiver when they get hit. From the 45-yard line. Here is David Palmer. Now for an update, let's go to New York and Greg. All right, Charlie, at Indianapolis, Vinny Testaverde, the lowest-rated quarterback coming in in the league, has thrown his third touchdown pass of the day, 65 yards. This one clicks with Leroy Horde. It's a 21-14 Browns lead at Indy. Charlie? All right, we come back to the Metrodome, where we have 13-47 in county. Second down and 10. Vikings have thrown 45 yards. Vikings leading 28-21. Remember, they were up 21 now. Going underneath the cover, the pass is complete to Chris Carter, his favorite receiver. Chris Singleton with a fistful of jersey. J.B. Brown there in the conversation. 
Put Mark that, it at the 49. Go ahead. And Charlie, that puts that passing combination seven of eight so far. What is that? That's no Viking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's no Viking. I beg it. But the Viking was the old guy with the big robe and the, and the long and the long thing that was blowing in the horn. And the, that guy looks like a some of the refugee out of a rock concert. He fell off his bike. He lost his weight. Warren Moon is up. Should have been intercepted. Ryan Cox was right there as if he was the intended receiver. Brian Cox was offered, Charlie, that exact same kind of duck that Jack Del Rio was offered by Dan Marino. Look at this thing. Perfect. Just knocked it down. Warren Moon's got to be thinking as soon as he throws this, I better cover. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you complaining about? He dropped it. Or Dan Saxon. Again. There's a flag down. Taking the guideline by O.J. McDuffie. But don't forget, we have a flag back at the 50-yard line. So we'll check that out. 46 yards on the kick, a 17-yard return. And that's a delay. You notice, of course, the... Uh, Hats of the official. Another throwback weekend in the NFL. The Vikings, their uniform from 1961. That was their first year in existence. You're looking now to the referee, Howard Rowe. Too many men on the field, on a kicking team. Penalties declined. First down. So Miami wants the football. We'll step aside. We'll be back to the Metrodome in just a moment what you get at McDonald's today. 12.35, time remaining in the ballgame. Starting this weekend, four teams in the NFL undefeated. Miami, they're coming into the ballgame 3-0. They trail Kansas City 3-0. They trail the Rams. San Diego 3-0. You'll see them later this afternoon. The Raiders on NBC. The Giants 3-0. They have an open day. From the 24 deep over the middle, and it's Keith Jackson, 49 yard line. 25 yards, first down. And Vincey Glenn gets a heck of a hit into Keith Jackson's back. Jackson lays it for a second and gets up. This wasn't enough. Merely a flesh wound, had worse. And Dan Marino has found his key weapons. He's found Keith Byers in the running game, and he's found Keith Jackson. That was a good, solid contact, but that did more for the Miami offense from a confidence standpoint than anything else. Dan Marino's working his magic again. From the shotgun. A little shuffle ball. Is loose and covered by Victor Jack Del Rio. No, it's a pass. It's a, a pass. It'll be incomplete. The shuffle pass forward. He never had possession. And Dan's helping the officials on that call, too. That was a forward pass. Incomplete. I guess they disagree here. Yes. <laughs> now watch what happens here. Gives up. Now watch, that's a forward pass. Henry Thomas, wonderful job, great penetration. But as soon as that ball goes out of Byers' hands and hits the ground, it's nothing more than an incomplete pass. Second and ten. Deep over the middle. It is incomplete. Fryer had it, could not hold on to it. Marino right on target. Third down. They went back over on Parker's side. Look at this huge cushion Parker still giving him. The ball is just a taste bit late. By the time the ball gets there, the receiver, the defenders have gotten there. It's right on the money, but the contact coming into the arms, that's a tough one to hold on to. Anthony Parker, excellent defensive play. Seventh time today for Dan Marino in this offense. They've been forced into third and ten or longer. That 
was a gutty effort by Byers. Waiting on where they marked the ball. It's a first down. First down, 41-yard line. And Denny Green's got to know right now, you know, that light at the end of the tunnel ain't the end of the game, Denny. It's a train. And right now, the train's got 41, 88, and 13 written all over it. Now, the key there was where the ball was when he went out of bounds. And, yeah, you can play what you want, but the call's been made, and the momentum's in Miami's court. 41-yard line, first down. Is there anything on the ground? But finally, yeah, there's about 10 yards. Jack Del Rio with the tackle. I really think this Minnesota Vikings team thought it was going to be as easy as it was in the preseason. Tony Dungy and this defense dominated Dan Marino and the Dolphins. It started out looking exactly the same. But right now, since we kicked the ball off in the second half, it's been a complete mirror image. The Miami offense and the Miami defense are taking it to a very flat Viking team. Nine and a half yards, longest run of the day for Miami. Second down, about a half yard. Marino likes to go long. He kicks the fourth line at the 10 yard line. They went back at the rookie, Dwayne Washington. Got Doug. We told you at the beginning they're going after the corner. They're going after the young guys. Pass interference. Number 20 defense. First down. Just watch. I mean, it's not real hard to figure this one out. Washington's giving him just as big of a cushion. But that forearm and the push into the back just came well before the ball got there. One more time. There's the forearm. There's the push. Look out. Here comes Dan Marino. 10-yard line. First down. Goal to go. And here is Parmalee around the corner. Has Dave Rice. Touchdown Miami on the ground. Nice job by Parmalee getting this ball around the corner and taking it in, but watch the blocking involved against Tony Dungy's defense. Dungy and the defensive coaches have got to be at a loss now. Their team looks flat. Fires. Whack. Takes care of McGrigg. Parmalee takes care of the rest. A lot of standing around, a lot of watching, and a lot of good stuff for the Miami Dolphins and bad stuff for the Vikings right now. 76 yards on the drive, seven plays, extra point for the tie. 28 unanswered points by the Dolphins. We are tied at 28. And the reaction of Don Shula. We are tied at 28. We have 10.34 left. Kadri Ismael, the return man for the Vikings. Trianovic kicks up. Taken at the four. To the 20, cuts outside, cuts back in. Good return, 30-yard line. Dan Marino, 28 unanswered points. Talk about comebacks. One, one of the great ones, a guy that is pumped up and as ready as he is right now, he can probably throw a ball 80 yards in the air and throw it on a nickel. And Warren Moon, he has seen 28 points disappear. 16 points disappear before. Remember the Buffalo game, the wild card? A 35-3, and they lost it in overtime. And, of course, a different time and a different ball club. He was with the Houston Oilers. He has a first down at the Viking 30-yard line. He play action takes pressure from behind. He avoids it. Throws nice play. Jake Reed does it again. And Warren Moon would not go down. Well, we talked about the, the shuffling and moving of Dan Marino when he's in the pocket. Warren Moon, a much more mobile quarterback, but what gets him through that one is another little shuffle. And a good job by Jake Reed of staying with his pattern, staying with this pass. He doesn't know what's going on behind him. He knows Moon's in trouble, though, when he sees that ball in the air and he has to run back to it. Jake Reed now has caught seven for 90 yards. 43-yard line first down. 9.45 in counting. Time remaining in the game. 
Play action fake. Deep over the middle. Has it on. Wide open is Chris Carter. And the connection of Moon to Carter. No. Jake Reed. And here's the guy who's come. A little bit of a come at, coming out party. Top side. Jake Reed. Push, push, push. And then make your break. I like this guy. He's getting aggressive. He's looking strong. And he's playing his side. And he has now 99 yards in reception. 36-yard line, Miami. The game is to Terry Allen. A quick burst up the middle. It's back to the right. He cuts back. He's caught at the five. Terry Allen. 30 yards. Denny Green says, here's how you answer a problem. Good clutch receptions, and then you just exploit this area right here. Watch what happens between the guards on this play. Good job coordination between Randall McDaniel and Christy, the center. Bernard Daphne, the right guard. And Terry Allen, just being Terry Allen once he gets in the open. 114 yards rushing for Terry Allen. Six-yard line. First and goal. Robert Smith. And he's got three to the three. It'll be second down and goal to go. Removing on the eight-minute mark time remaining, we are tied at 28 as the Vikings try to piece together a 70-yard touchdown drive to regain the lead. Well, you see the principals involved, Marino, Moon, Shula, Green. At halftime, things are looking ugly, looking like a game where one side's got to try to come back and the other side's got to hold on. Now it looks like two heavyweights. The fan take this. No, you take this. Bam! Scotty Graham is the remaining back. You talked about Mark Higgs being kind of the forgotten man in the running game for the Miami Dolphins. Scotty Graham sort of the same. Terry Allen back from the knee injury. Graham carried this team running-wise at the end of the last season. But right there, you talk about those heavyweight punches. That was a straight right to the face. And the extra point is good. The Vikings regain the lead. They are up 35 to 28. for the kickoff. Vikings kickoff. It is hit by a, an up line run, a scramble for the ball. It's anybody's ball. The Vikings say they have it. They are jumping for joy. We are waiting for the officials. They agree. And Don Shula has to ask his special teams. It's already happened once. How can it happen again? Ravez, very shallow, just drills the ball. Now everything's fine up until this point. Looks like Miami's going to get it, and the ball is taken away in the pile. So the Vikings start from their own 49-yard line, first down, 7-20. Time remaining, Minnesota with the lead by seven. And that's off to Terry Evans. Is that Graham again? Yes. The touchdown scoring Scotty Graham. Let's go back to that onside kick. Just bounces around, and here it's out, and now there it is, right there. You saw Griffith come up there and just dive in at the end for that ball. This is huge. This puts Minnesota and Warren Moon in a wonderful position, second and short. You're throwing the ball well. You're going to match up your life with this with a quick Carter. I think you go for it. And you have the lead, and you can take time off the clock. And they elect 
to take time off of the clock. And here is Graham and, and Dan Marino standing alone, hoping for one more, possibly two more opportunities. He might need them both. Scotty Graham Carey, the chains are going to come out. Number 31 for the Vikings. An interesting story. Last year, he was working for a pharmacy in Columbus, Ohio, and he got the call. And he then came in to report to the Vikings. And like you said, he has been overlooked this year, but not in this ball game. That is Scotty Graham of Ohio State, number 31 for the Minnesota Vikings, and there he is. A delightful young guy who, who is really a no-nonsense running back. He doesn't have the, the wiggle and the speed and the, and, and the ability to kind of squirt through holes like Terry Allen is. He's got more of the ability to create holes, and it's just what Warren Moon needs here for two reasons. One, to eat up the clock. Two, to get his running game going. And three is the possibility of another big play. Denny Green, Warren Moon, Brian Billick, their offensive coordinator, are not laid down offensive people. When they get a chance, they smell an opportunity, they go for it. Third down and short. And here is the first down. 49 yard line. Excuse me, 39 yard line as he crosses the 40. Okay, two people you got to take your hat off to though, after that kickoff though by the Minnesota Vikings though. Is not only Danny Green, because the ultimate decision is Gary is uh, Denny Green, but Gary Zahner, who's the special teams coach. You want to talk about it, you know, a few guts. You can suggest that to, an, uh, to a head coach. And when you suggest it and he does it and he works, it works. The head coach is pretty smart. When you suggest it and it doesn't work, guess whose fault it is? <laughs> <laughs> you lose points on your SATs, don't you? You better hear that bus because you're about to be rolled underneath it. Okay. Miami, 39 yard line, first down. Moon now will milk the clock. Stop the clock. Read the intended receiver. Let's go to New York for an update. Gentlemen. All right, Charlie. In Kansas City, it is now a final. Rams quarterback Chris Chandler in the first quarter connects with Flipper Anderson. 72 yards and a touchdown. Three Zendejas field goals and a defense did the rest. The first time in 204 games a Joe Montana quarterback team has been shut out. 16-0 Rams the final, Charlie. Boy, one of the major upsets of the season, and we have a penalty here. Well, it all started right there with Scotty Graham at the end of that play. Now, the problem is, officials did not see the first part. They see only the second part. That's always the problem. They never see the first guy. They're going to catch the second guy. A critical, critical mistake. And I tell you what, if I'm Brian Cox, you can pick on a better person than Chris Hinton. You don't want to pick on Chris Hinton. Not only that, you don't want to give up another stupid mistake by giving up another 15 yards. That is only the second penalty against Miami in the ballgame. And Miami's still right in the middle of this one. Vikings lead it 35-28. They have the ball now at the Miami 24-yard line. So a very costly penalty. But how often have you seen the concentration problems some players and some defenses have when they're thinking more fighting than football? They're thinking being more aggressive than they are thinking. Gets them in bad positions. And it comes back to that play-action possibility Warren Moon has in his pocket. And here is around the corner. He has about seven and a flag comes flying in. Now you're seeing an awful lot of the frustration from the Miami Dolphins coming out, actually on both sides, but more from the Dolphins after having had this great lead. Illegal block, number 86 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's on Jake Reed. Five minutes and nine seconds, time remaining. Kansas City losing their record now is three and one. San Diego, they are perfect, three and oh. They play later, second half of the doubleheader. Miami coming into this ball game, they were perfect, three and oh. They trail. The Vikings record two and one. They lost their first game, they won two in a row. This would give them three in a row. Spotted at the 31-yard line. 
But Dan Marino on the other sideline, Charlie, this thing's far, far, far from being over. First and 17. And here is Graham Whiteside. He makes the cut inside. He wants to stay inbound. And we've got another flag. We have had a flag on every play now. Do you see how easily he got the corner on that right side? Yeah. That tells me it's a holding call. That means a lineman or a, deep, or a tight end got their hands outside. Yeah, I mean, it just isn't that easy. You don't run around the corner that easy. And so two critical penalties against the Vikings. Number 78 offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That penalty's on Chris Hinton. We saw him earlier, a little deal he had going uh, with Brian Cox. Watch 78 pull. Blocking right there. Blocking on uh, Aubrey Beavers, the rookie linebacker. Just grabbed him by the sides of the shoulder pads and tugged him one too many times. You get out there, those, uh, those linesmen on the end, that's what their job is. They watch that end of the line of scrimmage in the block. So it's now first down and 27. The ball back at the 41-yard line. And Moon to throw. And the pass is caught underneath the coverage. It's Andrew Jordan, the rookie tight end. The other tight end, besides Adrian Cooper, when they go to the double tight end set, is Cooper and Jordan. And the clock moving now, 418 and counting. That is the time remaining. You're at the Metrodome, Miami and Minnesota. Miami undefeated coming into the ballgame. Minnesota's record was 2-1. and one. Vikings jumped out in front by a score of 28 to nothing. And then the Dolphins came back to tie at 28-28. And Scotty Graham scored for Minnesota, a 70-yard drive. He scored from three yards out. The Vikings took the lead 35-28. They have it here, and they have the football. As Warren Moon goes to the far side, it is pulled down by the man of the afternoon, Jake Reed. What a game he is having. Remember the cushions the Minnesota defense was given. Here's a pretty good cushion working right here. Malone's giving them plenty of room on the outside. Now, this is just want to here because this ball is not exactly thrown right to him. You know, Warren Moon had to sort of guesstimate on this pass right here because he was getting such good pressure real late from Webster. 79 came right in on his face, and Jake Reed went up and climbed it and got it. His ninth reception, 127 yards. the handoff underneath to Scotty Graham and the ball will be placed at the 20-yard line and again the officials separating players from the Dolphins and the Vikings and Juan Revesge is coming up and more importantly right here Juan Revesge is set up in what looked like before is real long field goal range if they tried it and now it's pretty reasonable Juan Revesge's fourth quarter percentage 76 percent of his field goals in the fourth quarter the line of scrimmage the 20 yard line we have a timeout clock is stopped 341 that is the time remaining and don't forget the second half of the doubleheader here on NBC most of you to see that matchup in Los Angeles San Diego, we mentioned undefeated. The Raiders, they're coming back behind their quarterback. Oh, Jeff Hosteller, he, he is coming on, and he's a leader. I mean, he's a guy not only can lead a team by his arm, but he'll, he'll lead a team by the nose. He'll, he'll grab them and take them with him. But first things first, we have to finish up here. 3.41, that is the time left. Say, anybody that saw Notre Dame, Michigan, and then Michigan, Colorado yesterday knows that... Uh, Leads of ten or more are never safe until it says four, zero, zero, zero. 38-yard field goal attempt. And it is up, and the crowd will tell you. Thirty-eight for thirty-eight. Thirty-eight yards, thirty-eight points. Back in a moment. Charlie Jones, Randy Cross, along with John Dockery. Who would have thought that with a minute to go in the first half, it looked as if the Vikings 
it was going to be a stroll in the park on a Sunday afternoon. Not me. This has been incredible. What a great job by Miami. What a flat job by Minnesota at the beginning of the second half. Now Miami's going the other way. Minnesota's going the other way. This is fabulous. This is the way it is supposed to finish up. Dan Marino should have to come into a game like this and win it because Warren Moon's played so well. It has been strength against strength against strength against strength. I think I covered all the bases. You were strong, sir. <laughs> 3.37. That is the time remaining in the ballgame. The Vikings are up by 10. 38-28. Tell you what, folks, if you got something to do, do it later. These two teams are not done right now. 326 left. And OJ McDuffie, all he's trying to do here is take this thing all the way back. The ball at the Viking 49 for Miami. This is their best field position that they have started a drive this afternoon. 326 left. There's pressure and is dumped over the middle of the buyers, and he should pick up the first down. He needed 10, of course. He gets 11 and the hurry up offense. And Dan Marino going to his weapons, going to Byers, going to Jackson. Look for Irving Fryer. First down, 38 yard line. A little bit of a low snap. Steps forward. He goes deep. All alone at the five yard line is Irving Fryer. 34 yards, it'll be first and goal. There was a flag. At the 42-yard line. Personal foul, and it's against Minnesota. <laughs> it just keeps coming, Charlie. Dan Marino scrambled, was getting pressure, and then just saw that. You cannot believe that coverage was dropped by Brian Davis like that. He saw Fryer open. Watch Marino. He knows what's happening. He knows his guy's there. And that's unnecessary by Harris. Don't even bother with the hands up. That's Dan Marino you're hitting late. If it's close, it's a penalty. But there's no question that you only have a step after the ball has been released, and the ball has been released a long time before the hit. And this is the worst thing that could possibly have happened to Tony Dungy and his defense. They, they wanted to make them earn this. They turn the ball to the 48, 49 yard line. Quick play, bam. Quick play, bam. Now they're down there. And we see Tony shaking his head. He knows it's not supposed to be like this. First down, goal to go. 2.53, time remaining. It's not there for Farmer. Henry Thomas stops it. Henry Thomas coming from the backside, looking like a defensive back or linebacker blitzing. He's cutting that corner so tight. Watch 97, right side of your screen. He's a blur. Throws off the tackler, comes down the line. That's why a guy like that goes to Pro Bowl. Hurry up offense, throwing it away. It'll be third down and goal to go. Too bad he threw that away, Charlie. Looks like he had a receiver open in the end zone right over where he threw it. Clock is stopped, 229 left. job Dennis Green has done with the Vikings. He made the playoffs the first two years, his first two years as a head coach. A victory here. The record would be three and one. And they lead by ten. And that may be cut to the hurt. Firing Washington up top. right where he was going. He was going to Irving Fryer, working up top against the rookie, Dwayne Washington. Look at him point to himself with that kind of, well, that was me. Pure timing. One, two, bang, let it go. Problem is, when you let it go and the other guy uh, doesn't uh, do what you think he's going to do, it looks bad. Miami, two of two on fourth down conversion. Trailing by 10, they go for the touchdown.
Watch the penetration in here, working up front. John Randall is going to get right in Dan Marino's face. He's trying to go to Keith Jackson, right in the middle of the end zone. Such quick pressure, he can't get it off accurately. They haven't done it a lot, but a heck of a time to get the pressure from John Randall. And a clean hit on Marino, because he hit him right after he made the release. And then he came up and did a little dance. Well, not even Dan Marino's got a quick enough release to get it away fast enough to avoid that pass rush. The Vikings now from their own two-yard line. And here is Graham. He comes inside. And he is up to the five. And Miami wants a timeout. 2.15. That is the time remaining in the ballgame. Vikings up by 10. 38-28. It's a tough decision when you get to that situation. You're down by 10. You know you need two scores. You go for the field goal there and try the touchdown later. That, of course, is second guessing. Yeah, absolutely not. I really happen to think that's a situation you've got to be going for the touchdown because I think the offense of the Minnesota Vikings has the ability to take the clock away as they're going to try to do here. The big offensive line is going to try to put their big body and use Scotty Graham as kind of a battering ram. Now, I, I really think you have to go for the touchdown there and you worry about the field goal at the end of the game. Where is Terry Allen? He hasn't been in in the last two or three sets. There he is on the sideline. Well, this is the time of the game, and, you know, Terry Allen knows it, the Miami defense knows it, and everybody on that offense on the field from Minnesota knows it. They're going to come off the ball, and they expect Warren Moon to hand the ball to the running back, and the running back, Scotty Graham or whoever, to have two hands on that ball. I don't care if it means losing a yard. I don't care if it means not getting that extra two yards. You don't put the ball on the ground. And here is Graham. And he is out to about the eight-yard line. And we'll take the count down to the two-minute warning. We have two minutes left in the game. We'll step aside. The Vikings have the ball and a 10-point lead. The big defensive play of the game, one-on-one. -on -one. Burt Widener and John Randall because there's a double team on Henry Thomas backside. We told you about it earlier. It was finally a factor. Randall cleanly beating Widener and getting in Dan Marino's face. Third down. the intended receiver had it for a moment and then couldn't hang on. It'll be fourth down. And it was just a high percentage dump it right down here. Just go for the quick first down. It was a very nice job by Chris Green who got the start today at free safety stripping that ball away from Jordan. So now with 156 that means that Mike Saxon will be kicking to O.J. McDuffie. McDuffie at the 50-yard line. I think you pressure this guy and try to get a shank punt out of him. He gets a pretty good one away. McDuffie backpedals to the 42. He's to the 45. 50, 49-yard line. 50 yards on the kick. Only a nine-yard return. You see the time remaining. 147. Miami has the ball, and they trail by 10 as Dan Marino will gather his troops one more time. One thing you're really not sensing from the Miami Dolphins at this point is any sense of desperation. They're used to this. They've been here before. They know their quarterback's been here before. And Don Shula knows if anybody can pull this one out for him, it is definitely Don, Dan Marino. Four-man rush for the Vikings. Pressure throws it underneath the coverage to Byers, and Byers down the sideline, and he may pick up the first down. Looked as if he was going to be out at the 42-yard line, and he gets to the 39, and he has the first down. And a great veteran smart play by Byers catching this ball. You know, Marino's getting pressure. They got him by the leg. Byers runs out there, and more importantly, gets a good block from O.J. McDuffie. He makes the block that enables them to get the first down and get out of bounds. We mentioned early, Byers, an excellent receiver. He has nine receptions for 76 yards in the game. Time remaining, 140. Reno hobbles forward. He goes deep over the middle. It is caught at the nine-yard line. Maybe the eight, Irving Fryer. And 
Here is that hurry of offense, 30 yards. It is first down and goal to go at the eight-yard line. Offside, and he throws this one away. Oh, but James Harris was, he almost lettered in the backfield. He did it again. Yes, he did. <laughs> Jump side, offside, just like the last time. This has got to be against Minnesota. And now this enables the Miami Dolphins to, to bring a Keith Jackson back into a game. This is offside, number 99 on the defense. An unabated move toward the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Unabated or whatever, he anticipated the snap. He jumped off sides when he saw the center, Dallenbach's head come up, and he jumped off sides. And really, that takes Miami up close enough now. That puts Keith Jackson back in the game, and it's become sort of a tight end oriented offense again. It's not just wide receivers. Remember, we mentioned when Marino went over 300 yards. Are you ready for this? He has thrown for 427 yards. The linebackers are back. The nickel is out for Minnesota. It is Byers. He dies. No, he does not go in. He didn't get in, but he got out. And he stops the clock. It'll be second down, goal to go, just inches away. Byers a little shaken up on that play, but... What a great job of concentration and determination. He gets hit. Now he's got his eye on that pylon. Got to break the plane. Didn't break the plane, but Anthony Parker couldn't bring him down. McDaniel barely did bring him down, and that's about as close as you can get to being in the end zone without being in the end zone. Situation. That's what he was flashing. And that's just a coordination there between he and the receiver. When he, when he threw that ball, the receiver was sinking in and Dan threw it out. Byers comes back into the ball game and you might be dinged and you might be hurting a little bit. You might be winded. You gotta be winded after what the second half they've had. But you get back in the game because Byers, Fryer, and Jackson are the guys you go to. One of them has got to get the ball here. Third down, goal to go. First back over the top, touchdown. He fires. Good flash drive by the Miami's offense. Exactly what they wanted. Get the ball back and get it in the end zone fast. Byers just gets up there before anybody really from the Minnesota defense had any idea that anybody in the backfield had the ball. A little uh, difference of opinions. I think that has to do with Mr. Byers celebrating with his spike in the end zone the defense of Miami did not appreciate. That drive consumed only 43 seconds off of the clock. Miami pulling within four. They want to cut it to three. Here's the extra point. And it is good. Vikings lead by three, 38-35 with one minute and four seconds left. Let's go back to that touchdown. Well, Byers does a nice job of just concentrating and bringing it right over what they do best, and that's go right over the middle. Dump it in there and get that big 250 pounds over and break the plane. And they got the, got the extra point. They're going to go to the kick here. I think they got to onside kick it. There's not really any choice here. You can't give the ball back to Warren Moon and let him try to do something with it. You got to kick the onside kick, and the biggest plays of the second half from a momentum standpoint have been from special teams. The kickoff return from O.J. McDuffie, the onside, the not onside kick from Minnesota, but that drill kick into the front line. Miami with one timeout remaining. The Vikings have three. And the decision is now being made. Well, this is when the special teams coach definitely earned their money. 
That's Mike Westhoff of the Miami Dolphins, their special teams coach. You saw Gary Zahner, the special teams coach of the Mi Minnesota Vikings earlier. All those hours of drill. Remember the sign in the Viking locker room said the good hands team will win two ball games. And the good hands team is there between the 40 and the 50 yard line for the Vikings. Now this is just a function of how good Pete Stojanovic is at that double hit and then bang bounce and how they can time it. The Vikings special teams, this is their t-shirt. Hit hard and watch good things happen. And I'd make a little addition to that. Cover a football. Catch a football. See, that ball there is set up specifically for it to take two quick little bounces and then jump up in the air to a jump ball situation. It has to go 10 yards. RB touched by a Viking. There's the hop in his fullback. Vikings have it. Chris Wall. In that case, catch the ball and good things happen. Yes. And now the Vikings need only to run 102 off of the clock. Now what didn't happen here, it didn't go two bounces, and it didn't quite have that real high jump, that real high bounce I'm sure Stojanovic and the Dolphins wanted to see out of this kick. The line of scrimmage, the 44-yard line of Miami. Again, they have one timeout remaining. All that Warren Moon has to do is kneel down. That's They'll it. take the timeout, and then he can run out the clock. You couldn't ask for a better situation the way this ball game came out. I mean, talk about getting your, your blood pressure going and your heart rate going. I'm sure Don Shula and the, and, the, and the Dolphins, when they went in at halftime, and Dan Marino, after his first half, didn't think really realistically. They thought, we can make this a football game. I don't know if they thought they could win it. I don't think they thought they could, but they made it more than a football game. They gave it everything they had. The problem was Minnesota dug deep, deep, deep and somehow came out of the funk they were in early. The Dolphins using their last timeout. Minnesota out in front, 28 to nothing. The Dolphins came back, 28 unanswered points to tie it. And then Minnesota went up by 10, and now by three, they lead 38-35, needing to run only 58 seconds off of the clock. And the Vikings and the Dolphins would have identical three and one record. You can what if this thing to death, Charlie. You know, I talked about, I agreed that Don Shula should have gone for that touchdown then, down there. Didn't need to kick the field goal. Sure, if you look at it now, that three points would have made this a tied ball game. I think in the context of that time, he made the proper decision and took the proper gamble. And I just had a thought. The way these two teams have played today and the way we expect them to continue to play, they could just meet again. They might just have to go for the uh, third as a time. I'm sure Danny Green and everybody here in Minnesota would love that to happen. We talked about Don Shula and Dan Marino wanting that to happen to get Dan back to the Super Bowl. And with the kneel down, we'll now the crowd take the countdown to make it official. The Minnesota Vikings defeat the Miami Dolphins by three. The final score, Vikings 38, Miami 35. A great ball game for John Dockery and Randy Cross. I'm Charlie Jones. I'm